Good evening, good afternoon to everybody. I hope you guys are very eager to, to listen to what we have planned for you today. As you see on your screen here, we have a wide range of topics. We have businesses coming to talk about their, their products, their services. We have also some persons coming to speak about what they've learned from businesses thus far. So I would like to officially welcome you to the session today. And I pray that you are blessed and that you enjoy the session. And as our sister prayed before, that you will leave this session feeling like you want to fulfill the calling that God has given you, especially if it's with regards to a business. So today, the person we had lined up for prayer is not here yet. So I will ask Sister Shelly Ann Graham, who is actually a member of our team, to open us in prayer, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here on this platform this afternoon. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all those who have taken the time out to present today. I pray, Lord, that whatever they present, that those of us who are here will get some, some good ideas, will get, you know, will support what they have to offer as well. And so, Lord, as we come before you, we pray, Lord, for all the technical situation here that all will go well that there will be no itches we pray oh god that all our presenters will be be able to present and all will go well for them also lord we thank you lord as we come today that you'll just bless each and every one on this platform i pray oh god that you will help those of us who might be running late and those oh god that would want to join will find the time to be here to share in this important and this um informative um, platform today. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you praise. In your name we pray today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So it is my pleasure to welcome you to the business symposium slash virtual trade show. And this symposium is facilitated by the Wailing Women Worldwide. Wailing Women Worldwide is a Christian organization um, nonprofit organization with the, the objective of praying and interceding on behalf of our nations and various other topics. GTA Economy, which is Global Transformation Agenda, is a group under Wailing Women Worldwide. GTA Economy has the objective of assisting persons in advancing personally and business wise. It's a nonprofit group, and we undertake various activities, including um, training sessions. Some of you may have been part of our previous training sessions. We undertook training in Excel, in accounting, and we also had two wonderful um, persons come to present on how to save, um, debt management, how to invest. So feel free. This session is a very interactive session. Feel free to stop at any time if you have a question. Um, we also have a special question and answer session lined up and I will inform you, but if you have a burning question, a burning um, desire to say something, please do not wait. Feel free to indicate. So the first, part of our program here today is a business on health supplements. So let me just take a look to see if our presenter on health supplements is here. So I am, I'm not seeing Dr. Anne Mumbi, who is supposed to present on health supplements yet. So what I will do, I will move on to the next presentation. The next presentation was supposed to have been facilitated by a gentleman called Jonathan William. 
Ale, sorry. However, he had a death in his family and he requested that I do the presentation on his behalf. So I will do that presentation. on his behalf. So once again, if you're not hearing me clearly, if there is any interruption in the internet, please let me know so I can um, repeat something that has been lost. So the first session deals with business plans. And we're going to be speaking about what a business profile is, what an executive summary is, the business background, marketing plan, market research, market strategy, human resource management plan, operations management plan, risk management plan, and financial plan. You're probably wondering what, why should I have, why should I do a business plan? The word business plan signifies information that you would present to someone, usually a financial institution, that would assist them in finding out key information about your business. The business plan would include information that would help an institution such as a bank determine whether or not to give you a loan, whether or not your business idea is viable. In order to undertake a business plan and to have an, uh, an appropriate business plan, here's on your screen, you're seeing what a snapshot of a business is. Name of the business, the type of business, the target market, the target market would be the persons that you want to sell your product or your service to. The address, email, the loan required, if you do require a loan, employment created, what is the potential of the business to create employment, your expected annual profit, and you also give a description of your product or your service, the structure of your business, you give information such as your telephone number, how much is it that you want, if it's a finan financial institution you want to lend from, the geographic area where your business is going to be located, are you going to be online, are you going to offer services in a, in the, only in your country, are you only going to offer services in the region, or is it going to be international? Where are you going to get your source of materials from and your projected annual sales? So an executive summary is usually done for a business plan. What usually happens is that for the executive summary, you prepare the rest of the document first. This is what I would advise you to do. Prepare the rest of the document first. And then after you have all your information in there, you go back and you summarize, you extract information from the information that you have to prepare your summary. Your summary must indicate what your product or service would be. For example, if I am going to be selling computers, my executive summary is supposed to say, um, Let's say my business system is um, Global Supplies. Global Supplies offers services of computer laptops, the provision of computer laptops, of telephone, um, cellular telephones, etc. Also, we undertake repairs of telephones and repairs of computers. So you're supposed to tell the bank or whoever you're presenting the, the business plan to what product or service that you have to offer. You need to indicate who are your intended customers and also why do you think your business idea would be successful? 
Many of us um, have business ideas. However, the business is not successful because it's not a viable business idea. Why is it not a viable business idea? It's because it's a product or service that perhaps not many persons want to purchase, or it's a product or service that is too costly, or there are a lot of competitors out there offering the same service you're offering at a cheaper price and a better quality. So you need to know whether or not your business is a viable idea. Your company information, you need to say, is your company incorporated? Is it a, a sole trader? Sole trader meaning you're the only one in your business. Is it a partnership, you and somebody else? Is it a limited liability company? Meaning, is your company registered with the government? Is your company um, liable to lawsuits? Are you protected from a lawsuit? And this is what the term limited liability would indicate. Limited liability would indicate that you have a business, but if something were to go wrong with your business, you are not responsible for any, your personal assets, meaning your, your money in the bank under your name and not the business's name is protected. Okay, do we have a question? No, okay. Vision, mission statement, your future plans, your objectives. And in a bit, we're gonna go over what your vision, what your mission statement is supposed to be like. The period covered by the business plan, expected sales, profit, cash surplus. And if you cannot do that on your own, you can always get somebody who an accountant or an economist or somebody who is good with numbers to help you um, estimate your sales, your profits, et cetera. How much money do you need to start your business? Do you need a loan? Do you have money in the bank that you're gonna use? How are you going to repay the loan? Do you have, a do you have collateral? Do you have land or something that the bank can use to protect itself? Okay, you have to consider all of that. Mission, the mission of your business is why are you there? Why does your business exist? Okay, in a nutshell, what is the benefit to society of your, the existence of your business? For example, let's say the similar, the same example, example I brought up earlier with the computer and the cell phone. I would say my mission statement would be something like, to produce, to offer the best quality computer and cell phones at the reasonable price to, um, to, to customers, you know? It's something that indicates the reason why your business is there. What is your business doing? What are you going to offer? And it should not be very long, okay? It should be very precise, very concise, and indicating what your services are. Vision. A vision is a vivid mental image of what you want your business to be at some point in the future, okay? Your goals, your aspirations. I want, okay, similar to um, several persons here on the platform with businesses, you want your business to be internationally recognized. You want your business to be the best company, you know? Where do you want to take your business to? So I'll pause here right now to see if anybody has any questions, any burning questions. Okay, great. Moving on. We are the bank of choice, dedicated to meeting the needs, <clears throat> excuse me, and aspirations of our people in a professional and efficient manner. This is a sample mission statement. The mission statement would indicate what your values are. 
on the screen here, you're seeing that the person requires professional, professionalism and efficiency. Okay, one of the, the values that you can, um, you can aspire to is perhaps integrity, confidentiality, okay? So there are certain values that you can put into your mission statement to let persons know how your business would operate. Your business would be confidential, your business would be, um, would, um, be customer oriented, et cetera. A sample of a vision statement to be the most successful supermarket chain in the Caribbean region, okay? What are your objectives? Your objectives is basically to give an, an, um, an indication of what you, your business is heading to and what you want to achieve. Your objectives should be SMART and SMART is an acronym that represents specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. What is it to be, what does it mean to be specific? You cannot say to provide goods. You need to say to provide cellular phones and computers. What it is, what is it to be measurable? You need to be able to quantify. Okay, if you have an, you have an objective of selling, let's say $30,000 worth of cellulars and cell phones and computers by 2023, you need to indicate some sort of number that can be used to measure your progress. Attainable, meaning that it should be attainable in the sense that it cannot be something that is too high or too, um, it cannot be something that is ridiculous that you cannot achieve, okay? Realistic means basically almost in the same sense, it has to be something that is achievable. Time bound, meaning as I spoke to you before, by 2023 or by May or by June, you indicate by when. Okay, a few examples on your screen. I'll not go through all the examples here on your screen, but you can see it has to commence operations, and you can be, I would advise you to be a little more detailed to commence operations where, let's say in St. Lucia, um, in Guyana, by March 1st, tw um, 2015. Business background. The ownership, as I spoke to you previously, the legal structure, are you a sole trader? Are you on your own? Do you have a partner? Is your business incorporated, et cetera? Incorporation is very important, especially when you have a business that has potential to, to, um, to, to get a lawsuit or a business that is very risky, a very high capital outlay needed, meaning that the amount of cash you need to start up the business or the investment in the business is very, very high, meaning if something goes wrong and you lose all the assets of the business, you need to know that your money, your personal money in the bank is protected. The history of the business, when did it open? Um, what investment did you use to open your business? The suppliers, the customers, you have 20 customers identified already, you have 50 suppliers um, and you're not reliant on only one supplier. Just in case something goes wrong with one supplier, you have another one. You need to know all of this information. How has the business grown since then? From the time you started, did you have two employees and then it grew to 10? Um, you only made $20 worth of sales per week before. However, right now you're making 1,000. What has the growth of your business been like? Business registration, certificate number. As I spoke to you previously about the limited liability company, if it's incorporated, you're gonna have a registration certificate, okay? 
the marketing management plan, market research. So before you undertake a business, you need to know, okay, will people really want my, my business or my product or my service? How many competitors do I have out there? What are the prices of my competitors? What is the quality of the product of my competitors? Right? You need to do a SWOT analysis. What is a SWOT analysis? The SWOT analysis basically tells you what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities? And what are your threats? Okay? So for example, if you're opening a beauty salon, let's say you're opening a beauty salon in some area in Trinidad, you need to identify, first of all, how many other business salons are there? If there are some other business salons there, what's the distance from yours to theirs? What services do they offer? Is it that they only cut hair, but they don't um, color your hair? Is it that they, they, um, they don't do nails, but you will do nails? You need to know what is the difference between your product, your service, your company, and those that would be your competitors. Marketing management plan, marketing strategy, okay? Describe your target market. Let's use the example of the beauty salon I brought up before. Your target market, you need to know if it's only men, if it's only women, if it's both men and women, are you going to be cutting hair for both men and women or are you going to specialize in only men, men, doing men's hair? Are you only going to specialize in doing, um, in shaving men? or coloring hair, culling, cutting hair, doing braids, what are you going to be doing? Who is your target market? Who are you going to be serving? Discuss the four Ps. Product or service, what are, are you going to be, um, what, is going, what are your products or your services going to be like? Your price, okay? Price is very, very important. Price is very, very important, right? Because your price de determines whether or not the person goes to your competitor or whether the person accepts your service or your product. Promotion, what does promotion mean? Promotion means, okay, you put your service out there on social media, in the newspaper, you, you put your, your ads on, on, um, on television, on the radio. How are you going to let persons know about your product? Are you going to um, do a flyer? Are you going to do um, some sort of um, announcement via WhatsApp? What are you going to do to promote your business? Place or distribution. Where are you going to be located? Are you going to be um, distributing your product all, all around the island or the country? Are you going to be only um, providing your product or your service to persons in one district, you need to know. Present a pro promotion budget and activity schedule. You need to know how much it is going to cost. Make some telephone calls and find out how much is it going to be to put an ad on the newspaper. If it's going to be $680, you need to know, do I have that $680? If I can't afford $680, then my next best option would be to use social media, to go to Facebook. Assist, I could get assistance from my friend to do a flyer and place a flyer on Facebook. That wouldn't cost me anything because my friend wouldn't charge me. You need to know all of that information. Okay? I know it may be a lot right now, but um, Feel free to stop me if you have any questions. I know it may be a lot of information to grasp right now. So just breaking down your target market a little more for you. What would the age be? Perhaps, okay, you only cater to, to, to the older generation or to young, younger generation. 
or you do not have an age limit. You cater to children, adults, anyone, anyone. Are you catering, as I mentioned before, only to females or males? Where is your business going to be located? What is your income going to be like? Your social class, occupation of your, your target audience, sorry, and education level. Give a description of what products or services you're gonna be offering. What are the most important features that would distinguish your product from somebody else's? For example, if you're gonna be selling earrings, one of the distinguishing features would be that your earrings are from only natural material. Your earrings are from coconut, um, coconut shells. Um, it's all natural, no plastic to destroy the environment because some persons may be environmentally conscious and they don't want any plastics in the earrings. What is your unique selling point? What is it that you offer that other persons don't? What is it that you offer that somebody else can't? As I mentioned before, pure all natural earrings, no plastic, no, no metal, you know, something that makes your product stand out over the rest of the products out there. Describe the benefits of your products. For example, if you have a, a let's say a health um, supplement, let's say there's something called Moringa. I don't know if in your country you use Moringa, but Moringa is very good. It, it has so many vitamins, so many minerals, and there is a gentleman here in St. Lucia selling Moringa powder, okay, Moringa tablets as well. So on his label, he's gonna put, helps reduce inflammation, helps balance your, your vitamin C, your vitamin A, et cetera. So you need to know what would your product benefit your customer, okay? And what differentiates your, your product, as I mentioned before. Your price. Price, as I mentioned, is very, very good. How do you determine what your price should be? What I would advise you to do is first of all, find out what would be the cost to produce your product, okay? Let's say you produce eggs. Well, how much would it cost you to produce one dozen eggs, right? As I mentioned to you before, you can always go to an accountant, somebody who is good with numbers, an economist, to ask the person to help you calculate your cost if you cannot do it on your own, okay? Um, GTA Economy, we can also assist you if you, um, we're a very small group, we cannot do many persons at one time, but we can also assist you if you, if you like, okay? Compare your prices with other persons, right? I would advise you to find out what, your, what the prices of your competitors are. If you are going to go um, sell earrings, coconut made from coconut shells, and there is somebody selling coconut earrings from coconut shells out there, and your earring is $20, but theirs is $5, and there's not much of a difference, take a wild guess as to who they're gonna buy the earring from, okay? Do your customers make purchases only on price, decision, the decision only on price? Or do they have loyalty to you? Are they loyal to you? Are they loyal to your cause? Because sometimes you may have a cause. It may be that you're a nonprofit organization and you want to make money to help some, some vulnerable group. So you need to know, are persons loyal to you or are they easily swayed by the price? In economics, we have something called the price elasticity, meaning that the impact on your demand by changes in the, from the changes in a price of a product. Meaning, if you were to increase your price by a dollar, how many customers would you lose? If you were to increase your price by 50 cents, were you going to, are you going to lose anybody? 
or are you going to maintain your customer base? Promotion, social media, with a mouth, radio advertising. You choose how you want your product to go out there and you need to choose the most effective way based on your budget. This is just a simple example of a budget. Um, 100 flyers would be 95 cents per flyer and it would cost $100. Facebook, um, monthly, perhaps you have to pay for an ad on Facebook as opposed to just putting the flyer on your, on your page. $5 US dollars for, from January to December for one year and you pay $60, but you, so you need to do some research. Place location, I will not go into detail with this one again because I've discussed it before. Human resource management plan. How many persons are, going, are you going to hire? Are you going to hire one secretary or two? If you're just starting out, do you really need a secretary for now? Can you answer your own calls? Can you ask your wife or your husband or your sister or your brother to assist you? You need to know because usually when starting off a business, you need to start small. Don't go hiring 20 secretaries, 50 um, research managers, and you only sell two products per month. You need to start very small in the beginning. What would the potential salaries be? Would somebody accept $1,000 for as a secretary? Would somebody accept $2,000? What would the price, the salary of a secretary be? You need to do all of that research as well. Training plans. If you are the one who knows how to do your product, are you going to train somebody? If you are the one who knows how to do the bags for your business, are you going to train other persons to do it? You need to know. Human resource management plan. This is if you have employees, okay? If you do not have any employees or you do not need a human resource management plan. But you need to know what are the duties of the person? Um, if it's an accountant or a secretary, what's the salary, etc. Operations management plan. Okay. From what time to what time are you open? Are you open on weekdays? Are you open on Saturdays? Are you open on Fridays? If you're seven day Adventist, do you close at two o'clock on a Friday, but you open on a Sunday? You need to let everyone know. Describe the business process, your production. Um, you have the equipment or you need to purchase equipment. You have inventory. You need to purchase your inventory. How do you pay your, your, your debtors? Okay. How do you, what's your credit policy? Can somebody wait three months to pay you? You need to know all of that. Your risk management plan because all of us know that things go wrong. Everything will not always be perfect. So you need to identify what may go wrong and how you can, what, what can you do to mitigate, mitigate against it. For example, one of the usual risk of a business is that the the persons who owe the business, they don't pay on time. How do you, what do you do if 20 customers do not pay you and you have your bills to pay? What are you going to do? Are you going to put a restriction on the number of items that they can owe you? Are you going to put a restriction on the number of months that somebody can owe you? After which, what are you going to do? What happens if a hurricane passes? What happens if um, COVID-19 happens, you know, as we've all experienced recently? What happens if you have to close your doors? Can you, can you undertake services online? Can you do, can you probably do house to house? Can you sell your product from a pickup? What can you do in case something happens? I'm going to pause here um, to find out if everybody's hearing me clearly. Do I have you, your attention? Are you lost? Are you okay? Yeah. 
Okay. We're, we're, we're good. Thank you. Wonderful. My wonderful. sister, you, you're doing a wonderful job. Keep it up, my sister. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. So, just as I mentioned to you, unreliable suppliers, loss of sales, develop relationship with more than one supplier. Okay. Because what happens if, okay, you do errands from coconut, um, coconut, um, coconut shells, right? However, this supplier always supplies you at a very late, late date. What do you do? It would be better to have more than one. So if you have two, then you can know if John supplies you very late, then Jackie would have already supplied you. So it will not affect your production. What if a hurricane comes, right? What can you do? You can get insurance, okay? Finance, financial management plan. It's an analysis of your current and your future financial position. As I mentioned before, do not be scared by the whole name because what you can do is to ask somebody to help you. So I'm not gonna go through in detail with, on, um, with everything you see on your screen here, but I'm just gonna browse through it. Your cash flow statement, how much money comes in, how much money goes out, okay? If you have a shortfall in, in your available cash, what happens? How much money is tied up at the bank? How much money do you have in your teal, in your business? How much money do you leave at one time in your business? How much money goes in? How much money goes out? Your profit and your loss statement, okay? What is your profit like? When you subtract your cost from your revenue, what do you get, okay? Your balance sheet is a technical term that simply describes your liabilities plus your assets would be your, um, sorry, your liabilities plus your capital would be your assets. What are your assets? Things you own. What are the liabilities? Think you, things you owe, okay? Remember, the business plan is your roadmap to success. This was supposed to have been done by Jonathan Allen. However, as I mentioned to you before, he has had a death in his family, so he asked me to present on his behalf. So right now, I will pause for any questions suggestions if we do not have any questions or suggestions we'll move on to the next agenda on the item and let me see if dr ann mumbai is there now dr um, Anna, are yes you there? yes okay. i'm here thank you wonderful Would you like me to share or would you? Um, go ahead, no problem. Okay. Excellent. Um, and thank you very much for this opportunity. I appreciate uh, being on call this night. I believe this is my first time to be able to join up with this um, global transformation arm economy team. And right from Kenya, Africa, I greet you all whether it's evening, whether it's morning, whether it's night, um, greetings. So before it's, Dr. Mumbai continues, yeah. I, will, I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Mumbai. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Sorry. Uh, Mumbi. 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 Yes. Yes. Dr. Mumbi founded CSM, the Shipful Ministries in 1998, with her husband, Canon Reverend Francis Omondi, Omondi. TSM mm -hmm. is an indigenous, sorry, an ingenuous missions agency that results, that recruits, sorry, trains and sends out missionaries to countries in the Sahel region, Sahel region. 
currently having presence in Kenya, Tanzania, and Mozambique to the glory of God. This is a cross-cultural ministry targeting the Muslim communities. Currently the head national coordinator, Willing Women Kenya, that's what her current post, and Willing Women East Africa coordinator. On the 12th of June, 2021, she received an honorary doctorate in theology. She's married to one husband and she has three sons. One is taking his second degree in medicine in Guyana, South America, our, our sister country. Two are working in Kenya. She loves the word of God. She loves prayer. She loves singing. And she loves lawn tennis. Help me welcome Dr. Anne Mumbi Omondi. Welcome. Thank you very welcome. much. Asante. Asante is thank you in um, Kiswahili. And welcome indeed each and every one of us and thank you for joining us today. I see we are 37 on the call. My name is Anne Mumbi Omondi from Kenya. And indeed um, we have a team with us. We appreciate all who have um, collaborated in this um, enormous task. Our short presentation um, will give us an overview of Marx International. It's an, a company which gives opportunity um, to improve your health, and your finances. I just want to continue and say that indeed we are Max, even as um, is shown on the screen, we indeed are Max and Ma Max is a US based uh, company. Just ask us to just move into the next, um, if you can just move up, thank you. Right, so Max is a US based company established in 2007. And we're in 18 countries around the world. We are expanding quickly, and that is indeed um, uh, uh, fabulous. We are a group of professionals from different backgrounds united by a common mission. Our commission-based business model and amazing products give us the opportunity to build our social networks, travel the world, create a great income, and we get to focus on our personal development and growth. And we also become part of a wonderful, positive community where we are all focused on making a global impact. Indeed, from the different continents, we have affected many lives. Personally, I was able to join um, this company um, in 2021, the fourth month. It came at a very strategic time when the whole world was, as it were, under lockdown. And so it really impacted me right around. As we continue, the mission of Max International, the next slide, please, um, is to empower people to build a legacy of significant change in their lives and in the lives of others. And it's true that this is what all of us want, that we may be able to leave a legacy to not only our immediate family, but the people in the community around us, indeed nations and people's continents around us. And so I mentioned that um, there are people who desire many different things in their lives, um, possibly a transformation in a place of residence where you desire to eventually you know, retire, the ability to take vacations, more time with your family, and um, just uh, being able to pursue educational goals, um, stepping out into the unknown, getting fit, and um, being able even to start up businesses. So this is um, some of the things that we desire to do as a people. When you think about a legacy of significant change, it, is, it, it starts with me. And what changes would, would I want to see in my own life? And this is a question that we can ask ourselves. And um, we continue and we realize that actually um, this place of health is so critical to each and every one of us. Um, 2020, 2021 was um, literally go slow for the entire nations. And I believe it allowed us to begin to look inwardly because many a time we're so caught up with what is outside of us. And unfortunately, most people in this world are exposed to high levels of pollution and toxins. They suffer from high stress, poor diets and lack of sleep. And these issues are not helping our health. Deaths, um, our health deaths from 
non-infectious diseases continue to rise. Um, according to the World Health Organization, the top two causes of death worldwide are heart disease and stroke, diabetes, even kidney disease and others that add to the leading causes of death globally. These trends definitely show us that there are health challenges in our world today. So taking care of our health is critical. Health is wealth. I just want to add here that um, I, we were able to see our father transit into you know, glory um, not long, about two months ago. And those were the last words that he spoke. He said, health is wealth. And we have all heard this saying, so taking good care of our bodies is a basic foundation for creating significant change in our lives. And so our overall health depends on our, the overall health of each individual cell. And um, you cannot overstate um, that. It is a fact that the strength of each cell, the vitality of each cell, the vibrancy of each cell will make our bodies stronger. And so even as we replenish ourselves and, uh, you know, billions of cells within our body and we need to be able to have um, what you call the basic um, molecule within each cell, which is glutathione. Um, glutathione is the molecule that does make a difference. If you can move on to the next um, um, slide, thank you. And so glutathione is the winning molecule that is, uh, as it were, um, lacking within each individual. I just want to mention here that it is at 100% as we are born. And um, by 20 years of age, you have 20% less glutathione in your body. By 40, 40 years of age, you have 40% less glutathione. And uh, you go on because it depletes by 1% each year. So by 50 years, 60 years, then there is a depletion of the critical molecule within each cell, which is glutathione. And we all know that we need glutathione to survive. I just want you to just type in the chat box glutathione. Uh, I'm not sure you got the spelling, but it's G-L-U. If you can go to the next slide, then they'll be able to see the spelling. Thank you. Glutathione, exactly, that's right. This is the most vital molecule in each cell. The question then we ask ourselves, what is glutathione? And as we move on even to the next slide, we'll be able to see that it is our body's natural defense against toxins, against pollution and more. You realize that indeed we produce it naturally in every cell in our bodies. It is our body's natural defense against uh, all the pollution that is around us, all the toxins that are around us, you know. And so every day there are thousands of attacks on our cells. And it is glutathione, I emphasize on this, it is glutathione that protects us against these attacks. And without optimal glutathione levels, our cells cannot stay healthy. And we know that our cells, if our cells are not healthy, then our bodies cannot be healthy. We ask ourselves, what are the benefits of glutathione? And as we move on to the next slide, we see that it does strengthen immunity. Um, it reduces inflammation, slows down aging, promotes energy, enhances sleep, improves mental function, improves performance. I, have, I bear witness to this. I've been able also to share this product with um, um, especially the flagship product, Salgivity, with many who have also found total transformation, even within their um, health and um, their ability to function in different areas. And so we move on and um, we say that, as I mentioned, there is um, what you call the good news of glutathione, but there's also what is not good news. Because at 20 years of age, the levels, like I mentioned, start going down. And so by the time you hit the 50, the 60 range, then um, you lose, you know, up to 50, 60% of your glutathione levels. And so it's not surprising that you start to hear about health issues, lack of energy, aches, pains, trouble sleeping, and so many other complaints as we see people getting older. And so causes of low glutathione, you will find, are poor diet, 
like we see in our next slide, alcohol intake, uh, pollution, stress, um, drugs, and um, other issues that cause our glutathione to go down even faster. Um, remember what we said, if we have optimal, optimal levels of glutathione, our cells are healthy. If we don't have enough glutathione, our cells are not healthy. And if our cells are not healthy, our bodies cannot be healthy. So this is a really big concern um, and ought to be emphasized in terms of information and being able to digest. We take note that over 74 medical conditions are linked with glutathione deficiency. Indeed, there are, all, are over 74 diseases and health challenges associated with what we have just mentioned, including diabetes, hypertension, stroke, arthritis, kidney disease, and so many more. And just a few of the health challenges associated these are just a few of the health challenges associated with glow glutathione. You realize that um, even when you talk about um, the compromised um, cell um, levels within each one who you know suffers, um, you know deficiency of um, you know cellular health, you know at one point or the other is able even to acquire or get cancer and some of these other disease long-term diseases. So challenges that are raising, challenges with raising glutathione levels um, is our next um, area of um, um, us to be able to look at. You see, because when you seek to absorb glutathione orally, um, the, it, is, it has poor absorption, you know, and it's not able to enter into the cell as it were, you know, because they're counter, you know, um, uh, molecules that uh, act against it. And glutathione is not able to be, you know, ingested by an IV. In any case, it's very expensive. There are those who actually have beauticians who, you know, inject them um, directly, but how would you sustain this? Because this is, is very expensive. So um, we just run along and um, realize that uh, Max International was able to then we say that Max International um, has a solution and that ribosine is a breakthrough in science that raises glutathione within the cells. Um, and so it's not able to be di digested, you know, intravenously, neither taken orally, but there is a solution called ribosine. And ribosine, and this is patented by Max, you know, it's an enhancing compound. You know, it's a combination of D-ribose and L-cysteine. Ribose is a simple sugar that we make to make, use to make energy. And cysteine is an amino acid that we need as one of the key components to make glutathione. The ribose protects the cysteine, getting it into the cell intact where the ribose will now produce energy and the cysteine is available to make glutathione. And I just want to literally clap for the inventor of this uh, product or this process who is none else but Dr. Herbert Nagasawa, a Japanese living in the USA, um, 45 years professor um, of uh, molecule medicinal chemistry. He has 25 years of research and 43 peer reviewed studies um, this work is patented and most advanced glutathione tech te technology exclusive to Max International. Um, great stuff here we're listening to. Ribosine was created by Dr. Herbert Nagasawa, an amazing man with over 45 years of prof professorship. He actually took time out having lost his brother and spent 25 years of his life in scientific research to create ribosine. And like we mentioned, he has in his, um, the back of his, as it were, his CV, 43 peer reviewed studies. And um, the advanced glutathione support available in the world 
with or, or, or has over 300% more if is more 300% more effective than the next best alternative at raising glutathione in the organ cells and we have heard that glutathione is critical for our health so this is a really big deal ribocin is truly a science breakthrough that solve, uh, solves a real problem in the world today and because it is only available from Max International, this gives us a business advantage that is remarkable. Please take note that it was not given to pharmaceuticals, you know, and um, Dr. Nagasawa made that choice. And um, we have them in um, the Max International. These are the products, as we can see on the screen, ribocene um, can be found in Max International. Most of the products have them. Breakthrough products and Max products are halal, meaning uh, certified. They are also can be used in um, the different nations, including the Muslim nations. They are also approved by the required authorities in any country where Max is officially open. All of our products are certified by the banned substance control group to have no banned some substances, and they are safe for athletes and for all of us to use. People do <laughs> love our products. <laughs> When they try them, as I did, they certainly do come back for more. And Celgivity, like I mentioned, um, is the flagship most advanced formula. It contains ribosine and 12 supporting ingredients that raise the glutathione levels within the cell. You take two capsules in the morning, two in the evening. Most healthy people will notice better energy, better mental focus, better sleep, reduced aches and pains, less inflammation. And anyone with a health challenge Sometimes the results can be life changing. If you're healthy, you want to remain healthy, take celgivity. If you're aging, want to stay youthful, take celgivity. If you have health challenges and you're recovering, take celgivity. If you're struggling with your health and running out of options, take celgivity. It is important to note that our pro pro products, if you can, if you, if, to note that our products are supplements. They are taken alongside your regular medications and do not treat, cure, or prevent any disease. All they do is improve glutathione within the cells. And when that happens, health can be remarkably re improved. The testimonies we see on this product are amazing. We never make promises on what salgivity will do for you. We simply say commit for three months, 90 days, and try and see, and you will surely have your own testimony. I just want to share, even as the you know, screen um, goes to the next um, uh, portion, Max ATP. It is a performance drink. I'll just uh, be able to describe the different products. We call it our ribosine fuel, and you can take it anytime you need mental or physical performance. It is our fastest acting product and a great product to sample with, as most people will feel the benefits within the first 15 or 20 minutes. It comes in a small powder sachet. You mix it with water. For exercise, it will take 15 to 20 minutes before your workout. And you will notice more robust performance and better recovery. It is also great to take when you need mental focus or energy throughout the day, either in the office studying or having a long day. Um, Celgivity is taken daily, Max ATP as well um, is take, is, can be taken when needed, just to make that point. Um, we do have Max Infuse, if you can just um, point that out, thank you very much. Max Infuse is another excellent product, it comes in a small powder sachet, you mix it with water, taking one sachet per day, it contains all the vitamins and nutrients that would get from 20,000, you would get from 20,000 calories of food in just 10 calories. It is an excellent source of nutrition, especially for busy people on the go and those with health challenges. Max Infuse is great to pair up with Celgivity as it is. it will help the Celgivity work better. And uh, here we go, Meta Switch, wow. I'm sure you're like, okay, the name looks familiar, but this is an amazing um, science-based and very effective weight management system. You take two capsules of switch 30 minutes before each meal with a large glass of water and switch will help to activate your metabolism so that it works the way it is supposed to. It also helps 
you to keep and build your lean muscle so that you're losing fat and not muscle as you lose weight. And what you'll notice is that your cravings are reduced. You'll have great energy. You will feel better overall in your health as you start to lose weight. Amazing. I certainly have lost over eight kilograms. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and that is my testimony. And so you want to commit um, using um, switch consistently, even for um, three months to get the best results. Max 357 is omega 357. And I just want to mention that these oils are gotten from the Norwegian seas and um, fresh waters. And so you can be sure about the excellence of products. And Max 357, um, in our next, uh, um, um, yes, the next product. Max 357 is Omega blend of three, five and seven. It's unique and it's an excellent product for the skin, the heart, the brain and the eyes. Max 357 also supports a healthy breakdown of fat and cholesterol in your body. So it promotes cardiovascular health, healthy metabolism, indeed brain, eye, nerve function, skin, anti-aging benefits, even for skin and the hair uh, and overall being. And so there's multiple testimonies. I remember the testimony of one nurse in London who had a stroke and was able to take Max over a period of time. And, you know, um, she, she's walking and working and she testifies. And so these are real stories. And so, um, I know we don't have much time. We would have had, um, you know, Sir Rubinson here just to give a short, you know, why not? And you can just pick up on that and even um, help us to know what economic value he got from it. Right, go on. Welcome Sir Rubinson. All right, thank you so, so much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time we are joined on this call. Honestly, I'm so grateful to be here. Standing on existing protocol, I want to appreciate the organizers of this event here. My name is Emmanuel Rubensin. I'm connecting from Nigeria in West Africa. All right, it's um, 8.33 p.m. and I'm excited to meet intelligent people, wonderful people who are giving great value. Um, a short story about why I'm so excited about this opportunity. I got to know of this opportunity two months after father was buried as a pastor. He died as a pastor at the age of 66. He had memory loss and stroke of 10 days. Um, he passed on in March 2019. He was buried in May. Um, on the other side, mother died at the age of 51 as a pastor. Now, why I'm stressing this, she, she just complained of headache. Oh, anybody could say, oh, for the headache, just take paracetamol or just take something. And um, it was on her birthday, lo and behold, the next day she was already gone. And only for us to discover her blood pressure was over 200 systolic reading. Now, a lot of us on this call, just like Dr. Anne among the first said, health is wealth. I'm, I'm passionate to save life. I'm passionate to give value to people. And um, the same health issue that claimed the life of mother and father at their young age. In, in 90 days when I joined the opportunity, I started getting testimonies. I cried, I had that tears. I said, oh, I wish they knew about this. So I turned my pain to passion of seven people. My passion became my profession. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I tell people I'm not a medical doctor, but I have doctors, even medical directors who have health conditions. So I turned my pain to passion, passion to a profession, and this profession have become my profits. Uh, in one year of being in this opportunity, I got a national award for impacting people with results. The truth is this, a lot of people cover health issues. We cover a lot of things. Now, how many of us know our body mass index? 
you need to know for every height, there's a weight you need to carry. People say, oh, nothing is wrong with me. I'm fine. I'm okay. It's a question of time. Some persons who got to know now that they are diabetic, they are hypertensive, once upon a time, they said nothing was wrong with them. I advocate for everybody, everybody. I mean, seeing the, the, the other presenter gave intelligent presentation about business. I learned a lot and I do not take this platform for granted. So um, let's go home with this. The information you have today, it may not be for you, but it's going to save the life of somebody. In a year, I got an award. The following year, I got an award and um, to the glory of God, I was working when I found this opportunity. The fourth month, I resigned from the job when this opportunity paid me more than a salary job. I'm not exaggerating, paid me more. I was a marketing ma manager. So if I could earn more, and right now, this is what I do, take care of my wife and my children. I'm so happy, I'm so excited. Uh, I would like to leave the stage so the next speaker can come around. So if anyone, oh, okay, I think I know one or two persons that would like to key into this value, please reach out to Dr. Anne, and um, we look forward to working with anybody around the world. I do my business from the comfort of my home, the same data. This is a plug and play economy, the same data, Uber, Bolt, all this Takes this drive companies. They don't have a car. They don't have a physical office. But guess what? Sincerely yours, they are connecting people. Mark Zuckerberg don't write content on Facebook. He created a platform. We have a system that work. So I, I don't want to just take the whole stage. I, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm going to wait till the end of this meeting, even if it takes me to till midnight. I, I love all what you're doing. You're all doing great. And we all, we are going to impact the lives of people. A lot of husbands back home, they are struggling with prostrate. Some don't know. A lot of younger people who are married might be having infertility issues. Now, when the cells are healthy, they form healthy tissues, healthy organs, then the, the system, you have the cardiovascular system, respiratory system, digestive system, and when all the systems are healthy, we have a healthy body. So, um, and our products, they are not um, addictive, okay? And it does not contradict with anybody on a medication. They, a good story of a medical doctor, my first big customer, he saw my post on Facebook, made a request for the products, not knowing he had hypertension, he had prostate issue, he had lipoma. The one person having multiple health conditions, how many of us can relate? I mean, one person might be having insomnia, might be having different health issues. So he tried the product and to the glory of God, while he was on his medication, he was reducing the dose of his medication gradually. Right now, as I speak, he's looking more young, 10 years younger than his age. So um, this is a great deal that will help everybody. Whatever is going to take care of our body, must be natural as much as possible. I would like to hand over to Dr. Ann. You are doing a great work. And my last statement is this. The best time to take care of your body is before the body is too weak. Let me repeat. The best time to take care of your body is before your cells, your organs, your tissue, before they are too weak. People pass on, die in the hands of smart, intelligent doctors. It's not that the doctors don't know. It's not that the surgeon don't know what to do, but the organs are too weak. So this is a wake-up call to everybody. We want to see you stay healthier, live longer, and impact the world. I sign out from Nigeria. Once again, my name is Emmanuel Rubenson. God bless you all. Thank you so, so much. We appreciate Sir Rubinson. And um, thank you so much um, to the team GTA. I know we have taken um, probably a little more time than we ought, but I just want to conclude if you have seen enough to make a decision even to join Max, don't hesitate. Please get back you know, to the contact even through the chat and then we'll be able to share more about this opportunity. Um, we want to say that um, nowhere is too far to reach. Um, there were products that were sent to Guyana already, 
And so um, even the Caribbeans is accessible and Max International is willing to open offices across the world. 18 nations is very small. They're actually officially opening in Kenya. So if you're from Kenya, um, this is a, a, a grand opportunity. I want to say this is an opportunity because um, at this moment, people are seeking to build their immunity. And it is, a, it is definitely not taking chances. It is um, uh, being purposeful about it. So thank you so much for this invitation. And we trust that we will still be able to get more time together. We're looking forward to work with you to create a legacy of significant change in your life um, as an individual, as families, um, even as we touch the lives of others. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you will be able to get back to us, even as you have gotten value from this presentation and welcome you to the Max family. Asante, shukran. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this wonderful presentation. I see somebody on the chat asking for your contact information. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, somebody requested, I think your telephone number. All right, I'll do that just now. And if I'll you can that. place an email address there as well. All right. So, who is ready for the next topic? Funky fungi, mushrooms. Such a wonderful food. So today we have Mr. Alexis with us. I'm gonna give a brief introduction of Mr. Alexis William. Mr. Alexis William lives in Fort for, for Assault Babono, St. Lucia. He is the owner of a company called Funky Fungi together with his wife, Chanel William. They are both farmers of quality homegrown mushroom for a little over six years. So everybody help me welcome Mr. Alexis Williams, who is gonna be speaking about mushrooms. Welcome Mr. Alexis Williams. Thanks so much and I'm grateful to be here. Um, to God be the glory and everybody within the chat room. I'd like to say a warm welcome and good afternoon to everybody. Um, like I said, in, uh, like she, um, our invigilator said in the beginning, my name is Alexis William. I am from Fuerto Barbo, North of um, Lucia. I specialize in the production and the growing of mushrooms within the supervisor to the length and breath of our island. Um, Anything that is organically grown, um, which is 100% um, promoting the environmental and the, and the protection of the environment is right up on my alley. And it is what I prefer to do and push 100%. So any questions you feel to ask, not to not be afraid, go ahead and give, give me a heads up and a, a question and I will most definitely stick to answer as best as I possibly can. Once again, I say good afternoon. So the first question we have, Mr. William, is how did you go into mush into the mushroom business? How did you get okay. the idea to undertake your mushroom business? Okay, well, um, I came from a carpentry background because my dad is a carpenter, but I spent most of my youth years working in the hotel and tourism industry as a gardener and specializing in flora and fauna. Um, up until my last employment started, which was Cap Mesa, which I spent like a leg and a half years, I find that the experience or the limitation put on a gardener is just that of, it's limited. So I decided to go into something that is not of the norm and to an extent that is something where it is non-traditional, that it won't call too much of a, or you will not create too much of a big um, 
I wouldn't say demand, but I would say like a competition towards yourself. So when I dis when I decided to go into mushroom, it was all along a very sunny day. I was on my lunch break and I was sitting beneath a mango tree and I was thinking like, I like this. I need to find something that is, you know, that stands out, that is more lucrative in terms of financing. And at the same time, this will be a positive, not just for me, but for the people I impact on and then the people I get to interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. So I decided, okay, all right. Why not go to into mushroom? So I caught up and I went to the chef and I said, oh, chef, what if I go into mushroom? What do you think? He said, Alexis, if you go into mushroom, I'll purchase everything for you. And from then on, I've been researching, developing, cloning, I'm creating my own spawns to an extent. And that's been so up from then until now. Anything else? Thank you. So has your business been profitable? How do you know as a, a business owner that you're making a, a good profit? So the reason why I'm asking is that we want persons on the platform who are interested in businesses, in mm -hmm. having their own business, or persons who may have a business now, we want them to know how do you go about knowing if you're making a profit? Okay. Um, I would start from there. The key goal, if you have an idea, which is not the norm, but it is to you and to the wider world in terms of your, your market research and, your, and what you have acquired in terms of knowledge about your product, and you put it out there, that you are, first and foremost have to believe in yourself and you have to keep on going. Um, in terms of the market, it has been very good. We have been in business for a little over like a 26 years. Um, we have surveyed the market for a little bit of about like three and a half years to make sure that we get everything patterned down and everything is correct. Every every I is dotted and every T is crossed. And when we surveyed the market, we realized, hey, there is a very good market for mushrooms in the island. And it's not just mushrooms in terms of the species I grow, I grow which is um, polyterous oysters, um, but it's always so agricultural. Uh, I actually got all my information off of the agricultural base um mushroom which is a portabella and a button mushroom but then when i introduced the the oyster family or the oyster species into the market i realized that there is a great demand for it and the chefs and them do come for it and they appreciate the value that is added to the meals and the menus and also the diversity and the way in which you can use it to promote and pro and produce new um menus so that they could produce to the guests. So in all in all, I would say, yes, the market for mushrooms is a very positive and it's a market that is growing steadily, but surely, and eventually it will get to the point where we can see Semisha will be the hub for mushroom growing in the Caribbean. So Mr. Williams, you brought up a very important point here. Yeah. What is that? Could you, ref could you draw reference to it? You brought up a very important point. In my presentation earlier, I spoke about knowing what the demand for your product is. And yes. I spoke about finding out if there are demand, how many competitors you have. So based on what you're telling, telling us, the, the demand for mushroom is very high. It is and very... this is why you're making a profit. Yes, it is. Wonderful. My next question to you is, what about your cost of production? How high well, my, is the cost of production for mushrooms? Well, my cost of production is little to none. It's, I will be one to say I'll be bragging, but it is little to none because most of what I need to produce the mushroom within St. Lucia, I, ought, I obtain locally. Um, it, it takes a little bit of um, science, ingenuity, and also marketing to actually ascertain and um, obtain certain products that you need so you can produce the mushroom. So I would say like for now, I know one of the biggest hiccups for me in, produ in my production cycle is obtaining um, dry material to actually produce the mushroom. Dry material, dry material meaning the substrate. Substrate is the base. This is for the growing medium for which which one 
or a farmer grows off his mushrooms that he presents to the market and to the wider world. Um, for now, we are dibbling and dabbling in cardboard, um, organic waste from the hotels, kind of like coffee, coffee waste. Um, we dibbling with also grass clippings, banana leaf, which comes from our main source of income when it comes to agriculture and technology, which is the bananas. I also double in planting banana and different other substitutes, but with our demand increasing on a day-to-day -day basis because like every other day or every two days I would increase it for new customer or a new somebody like interested in the growing mushroom or becoming a mushroom farmer or becoming an entrepreneur that I tell them that one of this one they need to first one identify which mushroom they want to go into two identify the service that the mushroom goes on free make sure that you have a sustainable amount of substrate and not just that but the spawn material which is the seed material that you can actually plant and grow and be able to produce much thank you so much mr william not a problem. so here you go for those of you coming in late we had a presentation so far on business management um running a business we had a presentation on a wonderful product healthy product that will save your life and right now we have Mr. William. Mr. William is discussing the production of mushrooms. So would anybody have any question for Mr. Alexis? Mr. William, sorry. Feel free. Feel free. We're going from the presentation to the practicality. How practical is it to go into a business? Is it I can also add it's a very practical one. Like I said, once you have what you intend to do or what your what your business plan states or what your passion is, once you go along with it full on uh, and make sure that you do understand, let's say, the ins and outs of it, do's, do's and don'ts, and that you just keep a, a set for that because one thing I've learned in business market that um, it is very competitive even if you sometimes you are the sole um, um, proprietor, but sometimes it is in terms of producing your product. It's not too much, let's say, like competition based, but let's say to get the most people to actually produce, it is a little bit competitive because most of the time you have to import stuff. But if you can use what you have within your island, it will be a better suit to you in terms of cost and production. Like I told you, um, to, for me to produce like about, 100 pounds of mushroom, it will only cost me about like roughly $25, basically. So the practicality of it is very good. And any ball that coming in, like I said, it's not just in the mushroom, probably you could do a composting or composting or something else. You need to study the market first and foremost, and also know, know your competition and your market in terms of pricing and where you can stand when you do actually develop your product and you have it out there so that you can present to people or present to the customer. Thank you so much, Mr. William. Any questions? Okay. Yes, I, I don't have, have a question, but I have, um, I must say I'm proud of Mr. William because I have used your mushroom and I love it very much. And very the good. only problem I have, I don't get enough when I go to the market. I don't get my mushroom. I know it's, so a, that, it's a quick, it's a quick, it's a very quick seller. I have heard that from many of customers and normally what is the trend now that they don't go directly to the supermarket. They will actually contact me via my, uh, my company's number and then they will place an order. We do have a large, a large order board that we have on the farm and we place according to who comes first, who comes second and so forth and so forth and so forth until we can get to say, okay, all right, Miss John, here is your mushroom, your order is ready, you can come and pick up. Or we can deliver every Tuesday and every Friday. But I know it's in the high demand and I know it's because we, we've been through the length from Breath of St. Lucia, from Marcy, um, Sufre, right up to Rodney Bay. And it, trust me, it's a, it, it, a demanding market. We produce and we have increased productions about like three times over um, in terms of um, producing mushroom because 
solutions on the whole are starting to realize the health benefits of mushroom and everybody tend to gravitate towards the alkaline foods. And so now we have an influx in terms, in terms of our local consumers also on the market. And since COVID came into play and then kind of threw everything out of work, so right now we are actually getting back into the group to supply the hotels and restaurants. But this is on the shelf and you can contact us personally and we can deliver once we live in our Okay, can you place your number in the chat please, Mr. William? Not and we problem. have a when you're done, have a and we have a question from Leslie Murray. Yeah, that's me. Hi, Mr. Williams. I wanted to ask if um you could use coconut husk as a substrate for the mushrooms. You can't use coconut husk for a substrate, but the supplementation in terms of adding nitrogen factor to your coconut husk will have to be significantly greater than your coconut husk input. So let's say you put about 100%, 100 pounds of coconut husk into your substrate, you might have to add 150% of supplement. It's kind of, it will help if it, if it gives you a good fun run, but it will also attract a lot of contamination. So I do recommend for, for new growers or people that are interested in going into mushrooms that they use coconut husk. And let's okay. see if you go into, let's say, agricultural, that means the portabella or the button mushroom where you can use the coconut as a casting layer for you to inhibit and promote the, the growth of the of the mushroom. Mushrooms. So, yes. Okay. Okay. Also, I wanted to ask which which kind of mushroom you think is most easy to grow here? You know, it's the easiest. Well, well like, our, like our Caribbean, our Barbados. tropical area. Well, yeah. Of late. I am the, I am a specialist in the Polyterus oysteris, the oyster family. So I have a pink oyster, pink oyster, gray oyster. I have a king oyster, I have a Florida gray, and I have a chicken of the wood. But we can also grow shiitake lion's mane because I, right now sitting in my lab, I I have at least twenty vials of different kind of mushroom strains that are that are suitable for our environment which is subtropical and tropical within the Caribbean and we can we will be able to produce it because I have already identified a lot of um wood based substrates in terms of mongo um, um the fai canoe um the blue maro and different other hardwoods we have in the island we can actually use to grow things like um which is like itaki um lion's mane chicken of the wood Inoki and, and a whole lot of edible strains and also medical strains. But most mm -hmm. mushrooms, once they fall in the range of tropical and subtropical, they are suited for our climate, they will be able most definitely to grow. Once you give them the optimum temperature they need to grow and the, the right amount of nitrogen, they will most definitely grow for you. Okay, thank you so much. Most welcome. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Good afternoon. Was the market late for export there from St. Lucia? I mean, I know heard you say um, that you 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 basically sell everything you grow, and um, the hotels, I guess, are the biggest buyers along with the other customers. But what about export? Can you actually do that with um, well, with that involved? Well, for now. Um, I have a few international markets that are actually interested in some of our byproducts, not too much, say, the fresh mushroom, but let's say the value added, like the pickled mushroom, um, the dry mushroom, and also the powdered the powder mushroom, which, fetch, which fetches a good and a hefty price on the international market when it comes to the hotel and tourism industry. So, yes, we do have one from Trinidad and Tobago, and from Barbados, I can see the accent. Um, we have one from Vietnam and also Guyana, and as far as US BDM. So the international market for exporting mushroom is very lucrative and it is one that I'm looking to talk, tap into as we already created some linkages between a few Caribbean islands and the US BDM. Wonderful. We also have persons here from Jamaica, we have from Africa, we have St. Lucia. We have Barbados, we have St. Vincent. So feel free, 
everyone to sample the product. As my mother said earlier, she cannot get enough. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions before we move on to the next topic? I'm really enjoying the session. I don't know about you, but I'm really, really enjoying it. Mr. Williams, <laughs> I have another question. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, oh. yes. Okay. Yes. Go okay. Ahead. I wanted to ask if you used a when you started in the very beginning, did you did you happen to to use a starter kit, a mushroom starter kit, or you just um you know I used started, the raw materials? I, I started straight from raw materials. Everything I acquire and the knowledge I I know right now up until this day is being self-taught. Everything is been everything is being trial and error to the point where I actually have a good functional lab that can produce anywhere between 3,000 to 12,000 five pound bags of cooking material that can actually produce much more stuff. But it is, I wouldn't advise it, unless if you tend to double and double in the culture. The sassel kit is a good choice for the people that just want to see how the whole mushroom goes. But if you actually want to go into mushroom production, I put, I would advise that you start from scratch. Just start to grow the mushroom before you can understand the morphology and the whole aspect of it. So I would say, start a case, no, no. Understand exactly what you say to people because a lot of people tend to believe that it is kind of normal to, let's say, a cucumber patch or a pumpkin patch or a cucumber patch that you have it on a different time. This is do. But at the same time, it deserves a little bit more love and attention than the other traditional crops. But if you decide you want to go into mushroom, I advise that you start from a spring culture, which is the food culture, and you go from there. You learn all what to find, and then you go from there and you scale up. Mm, gotcha. Thanks. No problem. So. We have a question. Can I plant mushroom at the back of my house for family con consumption? Yes, you can. It, it depends on whether you want to go through the whole process or if you want to if you want to put it some parts like the previous um um what you said that if you want to go into you can just go into a kit and then you can let it probably invest in that from five and five kit and go mushroom for your own consumption. Yes. Thank you very much. And uh, we have another um, question. Somebody wanted to know the name of your product. So tell us My, the name again. Okay. I am from Funky Fungi. Mushroom Funky Farm Fungi. Out of Funky Fungi. F U N T Y F U N T I. See, you have another customer already, Mr. William. Somebody also wants to know do you have a link for anyone who wants to start? I know you do your training sessions. Right, so can you train somebody in Ghana or in Africa, for example? Yes, we can. We all we have to do is to send it to the Ica board. Um, I have a few consultant there in terms of brand. We can also organize and be able to give you all the ins and outs into how we can set up and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so somebody wants to know what other local products they can use, and the person is from Accra, Ghana. So can, what are the local products we can use to grow mushrooms? Okay, from what I have seen, I'm, I'm in a quite, I'm in quite a few groups, especially, and I noticed there is quite a few growers out of Africa. They use a lot of straw and banana leaves. Banana leaves with coffee, coffee grounds, the coffee, the, the byproduct of the coffee leaves, after you do your coffee, you can use it as a natural leaf, you can use a banana leaf, and any other hardwood, Cold straw, banana leaves, or grass that you can find, you can use it at a specific percentage, and then you'll be able to produce the mushroom. So, they, so much, um, the oysters are not selective unless you get into the most typical um, oysters like the spring oyster, uh, the cool weather pool. Um, but other than that, all the other oysters are very adaptable. They are naturally composed, which means that they. Um, Go off, they go directly off of the substrate that they got. They did, they did, they substrate do not need to go for a composing process for the composing. That's why it's called for natural decomposing. So the mushrooms can be adapted to all of them. Like I tell you in the beginning, 
I also I have a full oyster. It's a nice bone white oyster, but it's also it's not too comparable to the banana leaf and the hardwood, but it loves cardboard. It is wonderful of cardboard supplemented with coffee, cornmeal, or even corn. Thank you very much. So before we move on to the next presenter, any more questions? Thank you so much, Mr. William. We really enjoyed your presentation. Thanks, Mr. Miller. And also place your email address. I will. Thank you very much. So next we have Sister Shirley, uh, Shirley Mitchell Bowment. Are you there? Are you on the call? Shirley Mitchell Bowment? I'm here. Good afternoon. Are you hearing me? Okay, wonderful. So our next presenter, it's my pleasure to welcome our next presenter. Shirlene Mitchell Bowment is the CEO of Christ Executive Officer. Executor to Kingdom Business of an individual business called Just Towers International since 2006. She is the president of a nonprofit organization called Tamar International since 2009. She is married, a mother, and a grandmother. Mrs. Bowment is very humble to have both these businesses, and her heart's desire is to hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant a verse that is very dear to her, Proverbs 19.21. There are many devices in a man's heart, but only the counsel of the Lord will stand. Welcome, Shirlene Mitchell Bowman. Uh, welcome. Thank you, you so free much. To go ahead. So I'm glad to be here just to share the testimony of Justa Wills and its booting of um, all the others that children that has come from it. So you can go ahead. So the testimony, how it all began, the launch, the birth of Just Towers International and the journey and today presently what is happening. Thank you. So a candlelight, it all began with a candlelight. And so back in 1998, I had the idea and I shared this idea with my mom, all about towels. I can't say where it came from, but just the towels was in my mind. And I shared it with my mom. And seven years later, that was in 2005, I did the, the business plan, the simple business plan under candlelight. You know, and so the candlelight is very significant. And the, the name just towels itself. Um, I used to work in the airport at that time, and I remember a businessman coming in to do some business, and I, he was encouraging me to go into business. And he asked me what I wanted to do. And so I told him that I wanted to go into business selling towels. And he said, just towels. And I said, yes, and you know what? That's going to be the name of it. And so that's how the name for the business came, Just Towels. And the colors of Just Towels are green, blue, and lilac. And the, that's the, um, the colors. And then the, for the nonprofit organization, TMA International is red, white, and black, which is the colors of, or national colors of Trinidad and Tobago. It's just amazing what God can do. I say just those, but it's amazing what God has done with towers. Next, next slide, please. And so I, just to give a little history, I enrolled in the School of Ministry at our Victory Training Center. That was 2005, 2006. And at that time, we were encouraged to work with a tool of our trade and for that special service. And I took a towel with me and I left that towel with the pastor and asked him to just pray. And in that very year, March of 2006, I was able to register Just Towels with the Ministry of Legal Affairs. And Just Towels was launched on the 
31st of May 2006. The low you're seeing above is the one that's before, and one below is what I presently use because in 2021 we had a rebirth for the 15th anniversary of Just Stones. And just to highlight some of the tower shows, because interestingly, God used the towels to birth these ministries or these different aspects of what I do. So for, for the starting, we had the first one was in Arima, and that was dedicated to women with issues. Uh, the second one was at Temple Dora Shakaramas, and that was dedicated to the family. The third and the fourth was dedicated to persons who wanted to go into business and didn't know what to do. Uh, the theme, as you see, the little um, uh, um, italics there, influence in your sphere, influence in your sphere and beyond. The fifth tower show was dedicated to widows and widowers, and that's where Tema came into play as well. The sixth tower show was in Barbados, dedicated to pastors and leaders. Again, all these tower shows were done with the whole, just to be able to promote the towers, but in the same time, God was putting other things through the towers. So these are some of the flyers, and oftentimes when I speak about just towers, sometimes people wonder if towers are really involved, but yes, towers are involved. And one of the key things I realized over the years is just to be obedient to what God is saying to you. And when I, you know, the getting the name and doing the business plan, you know, the scripture says, do the, do the vision tarry, it shall come to pass. And I've seen God cause so many other things to come forth. Continue, please. So these are what happened, the birds. So when I started off with Just Towels in 2006, it was Just Towels, but by the time I got to the third towel show, God told me to change the name to Just Towels International. So that's even how we were able to go to the other countries to be able to do the towel shows. So uh, that was in 2008, Just Towers was changed to Just Towers International, Just Towers Worship Center. We have a place where people can gather anytime, any day, anyhow, just to worship God. So it's called Just Towers, Just Towers Worship Center, Just Towers Taxi Service. I heard in 2008, a fleet of cars. So I still trust God for even this aspect of the business to manifest. Uh, just Towers Balloon Decorating Course, and it's amazing again. It's not just about towers. Do that thing that you have in your hand, the, the idea God has placed in your heart, it may seem so insignificant, but when you give it to God, he can turn it into something so great. And literally, I've seen God take just towers and cause me even now to be teaching, doing balloon decorating courses online and in person. Yes, and why? Because I wanted to be able to how, when I have my events, decorate for my events. So I learned the course and now I'm now teaching it as well. Uh, Tema International. As I said before, Tema is one of the main babies uh, in terms of this is a nonprofit organization. We focus on the needs of widows and widowers everywhere. And Tema International, again, it carries the colors red, white, and black. And in, in doing Tema, the School for the Children Fund also came forth. Um, and this is a fund to help children of the widow at any given time who are unable to pay their tuition. The magazine publication also came out of, out, out of doing the, the ministry towards the widows and widowers. And this publication, again, is dedicated to widows and widowers. And the ministry information, and as I said before, it's more than towers. So we are located here in Trinidad and Barataria. We have, as I said, the balloon courses, the rental of using even just towers worship center, and of course, towers of any type, baby towers, beach towers, hand towers, kitchen towers, towers. And of course, if you want to be able to become a Covenant partner with Tema International, you can do so by just simply giving $5 a month or $60 a year. And what that is able to do, that is able to help us to be able to give out at least, at least I say three hampers every month. And 
or help in the case of a, if a widow or a widower comes and reaches out to us for help in any way, we are able to assist them uh, with any emergency needs at that particular time. So this is who we are at Just Wells, and by extension, Tema International and all the other arms of what we do and offer. So I give God thanks for what he has birthed within my heart and nothing is too difficult when you really give it to God. So just continue to believe in what God has given to you. You notice I didn't talk about money because what God gave me was an idea. And from that idea, he has birthed all these things. And I often say that is a, because of a towel, I'm able to meet not just you today, but even connect with Wailing Women worldwide. So again, I encourage you to just connect with that gift. What did Moses have a rod? Connect with the gift that God has given to you and give it back to him and allow him to multiply. So I really thank the, the organizers for giving me this opportunity to share this testimony, this brief testimony of Just Towers International. So God bless you and continue to enjoy the rest of the evening's presentations and all that we will benefit from. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Regis, and even those who have gone before and those who are to come. Thank you so much. God bless. You're very welcome, very welcome. Um, and I can hear the passion in your voice. I can hear the passion. You got the idea and you, know, you went for it. I really love that. One question I have for you. Um, you mentioned about changing your logos. Why is it important for you to have a logo? Why did you feel it like, why did you feel it was important to change your logo? Well, <laughs> to be honest, I didn't want to have to change it, but I had to, and I think it was to be able to be identified with something new that God was doing in this particular season. And sometimes you start one way and God continues to reveal to you so that when, and that's the next thing too, I started off as just always. And yes, the already logo had the international aspect. I guess God wanted to do something new. And so the new came. So it's very important to have something to identify you with your uh, product, your service. Wonderful. Any questions from the participants? Um, also, Please place your information, your telephone number, your email address in the chat. So if anyone wants to get your services, they will contact you. Any questions from anybody from? I will take a break here and I will ask, what are you, what have you gleaned? What have you gotten from the present from the presentation so far? Are you motivated to start your own business? Speak to me. I want somebody from the audience to speak to me. Are you motivated? Do you feel led to, to go into a business? Are you feeling that you can? What are your thoughts? Everybody don't speak at one time. Hi, good afternoon. Go ahead. My name is Shirlene. Um, I thank you for the for the presentations, especially the one with Just Towels. I have a business of a creative nature. I'm a poet psalmist and I um, do canvas printed tote bag and I kind of stop. This leg of the business was built during the pandemic and it is a bit challenging in terms of marketing and advertising of the product. Because I have two children, I'm a single mother. I have two children under the age of five. And to see where Just Towers came from and to where it is now is more like an encouragement to not give up. I am also a published author and I have manuscripts waiting, waiting to be published. And um, I have one book published. I have a number of things that I want to do, but don't have the finance to do. And I can't afford to give up my training and my motivation. So I thank you for this 
evening session. And I'll be until the end. Wonderful. I'm very touched. Thank you very much. And um, I hope I'm not putting my mother on the spot here, but um, your story reminds me of my mother. Growing up, my mother, um, she, she sold um, icicles. She and my oldest brothers, my oldest brothers, they sold icicles, apples, just to get us through. So I can totally relate to your story. I can totally relate to, to what you're going through. And what I will tell you, don't give up. Um, the children, they will grow and God will take care and supply your needs. So God bless you. And I'm very touched by what you just said. Thank you. Um, thank you. You're very welcome. I see a comment here. Great eye opener. Uh, the choice of name is very important. And God will, God will continue to expand your global impact. Anybody else, feel free to let us know how the symposium is going for you. Open up your mics, feel free. Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. I really, I really, really do appreciate this platform this afternoon. I thank God for all the presenters before. And I must say, for me personally, it's just a lot of encouragement for me because it's been over five years the Lord have laid on my heart to open up my own business, but I do not know why I keep on encouraging everybody to do their own. I support persons' businesses. I promote it and everything. But sitting here today, it really dawned on me. It's about time that I make a move. So, and I think the move started this week because this week I looked at my CEO and I said to her, "Health, good health can give me wealth, but wealth may not necessarily give me good health. And I resigned my job. And the journey begins from this week. So I thank God for today. I thank for God for all of you and all the best to everyone. God bless you. Thank you very much for, for this. Really appreciate it. So before we go on to the next person, I will give one more opportunity for any questions. And if not, we'll go on to Sister Lisa Beckles from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, so once again, it is my pleasure to introduce another great, another great presenter. Um, we have our sister Lisa Beckles from Trinidad and Tobago. She has a Bachelor's of Science in Hotel Management with first class honors from the University of the West Indies. She has vast working experience, including at BWIA, Plantation Inn and Hilton Trinidad as a food and beverage manager purchasing manager, both acting and assistant, IC purchasing and cost control, and she also has experience in banking. She resigned her job in 2011 and began her entrepreneurial journey in consultancy with the aim of helping Caribbean businesses and persons to come to their fullest potential. She's a principal consultant of Lisa Beckles Consulting, a regional hospitality and life skills focused business. Sister Lisa Beckles is a lover of Jesus Christ and his people. Ms. Beckles accepted Jesus Christ in September of 1997, and she served multiple posts, including uh, multiple posts, sorry, after she got saved. She's also the coordinator for the Santa Cruz chapter of the Willing Women Worldwide Trinidad and Tobago. And she serves on the Willing Women Worldwide Caribbean GTA Media and the Evangelism Committee. Her ministry is currently focused on prayer, worship and evangelism to help bring in the end time harvest. Help me welcome Sister Lisa Beckles.
Are you there? Are you there, Lisa Beckles? I see a Lisa there, but I'm not sure if this is the same Lisa. Lisa Beckles? Okay, so we'll move on to the next presentation. Brandon Lee Strachan, are you there? Okay, I see you there. Good afternoon, yes I am. Okay, wonderful, one second. Please let me know if you can hear the audio very clearly. Um, if not, um, perhaps um, try increasing the volume on your, your device. But this is a video that we're gonna play and after we're gonna accept any questions or comments that you may have. It's owned and operated by my son, Chef Leonardo Johnson. And myself, Brenda Lee Jones Tron. This company is birthed out of a lot of frustration and did not know what to do with my son. My son was sick for the first 27 years of his life, and upon completing high school, did not know what to do with him. I know. He needed to go off to college, but didn't know what else to do. He had already went to flying school at a boarding school in Florida called Florida Air Academy because he wanted to be a pilot. And then he came back home uh, and met a teacher by the name of Miss Yvonne Perriel from Jamaica. She was the home ec teacher in San Salvador. And one day he had a talk with her and asked him what he wanted to do. And he said he wanted to fly. So she said, well, why don't you go into culinary? And then you can still fly part-time. So he got a dream as to, okay, I'll go into culinary. And I will fly to my various clients or come back home to San Salvador and build up a company and fly, get in for a day for an exclusive day picnic where he can cook and serve guests and then fly them back out. Um, we started off with him completing college, but we got a grant from the government to start off the company. The company went up and down hills. We opened up in a restaurant. We had to close the restaurant because of uh, lack of funding to keep it going. And then we decided to event the club made to take a job as a chef. But on still to pursue his culinary baking and, and cooking. So we decided to get a contract at the government school, catering lunch to the school. And we continue to do that up to today. But on the side, we also cater to weddings and parties office meetings, uh, personal chef. We have winter residents in San Salvador that have. Um, excuse me, I, somebody said that the volume is very low. 
Um, look, I have my volume at the highest. Is it possible for you to, to increase the volume on your device? Um, but can can persons hear what you're saying? Yes, we can hear. Yes, we can hear. Okay, wonderful. Yes. Okay, thank you. Home, I come down for the winter, and they get them to be a personal chef. He goes into their home and cook for them, and cater to them in their own home, or those who rent their homes. He cater to guests at their homes whenever it's needed and wanted. His hope is still to have this nice five-star restaurant where he can still fly in his customers and fly them back out and give them a good an experience in a five-star restaurant and enjoy all the natural beauty of San Salvador. San Salvador is the island of Christopher Columbus discover when he tried to find out whether the world was round or flat. He landed in San Salvador on October 12, 1942. In a nutshell, that's where Bobby's catering started and where we are at and what is our goal for the long term. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the beautiful pictures of the different baking and cuisine. Leonardo has an associate degree in culinary and associate degree in international baking and pastry. God bless you. Thank you very much. So my question to you you mentioned that you went through some financial difficulties. How did you come back? How did you resume your business after having faced that kind of situation? Uh, we still haven't bounced back the way we need, want to be, but we trust God every day. We are still, just believe in God, you brought us to this, and this is, we are doing what you said to do, and, and you're gonna take us through this until we get back to where we need to be. So it's every day we trust God for the next day. Uh, but I know that God is able. We are Amen. back Amen. up, but not where we want to be. Amen. Somebody says it looks yummy. Another person says amazing dishes. Be sure to put your contact information, your email, your telephone in the chat because you're getting some persons hungry right now. Do we have any questions for Brenda Lee Strachan? Anybody? Feel free to take this opportunity. Oh. So she's currently placing her information in the chat. So right now we're gonna move on. Let me see if Lisa Beckles is here now. Okay. So Lisa Beckles, you, you missed your own introduction. I've already introduced you. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go straight into your presentation. Okay, good afternoon, Sister Shalin. Good afternoon, everyone else. Thank you so much for introducing me and having me on this. Um, uh, no, it's not th this presentation, it's the other one with the lessons learned. I can go ahead and share from my screen, if you wish. Sister Shalin, should I go ahead 
Just one second, I'm just uploading it, okay. one second. Okay, no problem. So hearty good evening or good afternoon to everyone. Um, apologies to you all who were waiting. Actually, um, we had a little understanding because I've actually just come off another section session with some young people. So I'd asked to be on after 4.30, so to give enough time from that session. But I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be here to just share a bit that I hope may be helpful to somebody this afternoon as you may be considering, maybe you're an entrepreneur or maybe you're contemplating getting on your entrepreneurial journey. So my presentation is gonna be, my first presentation is actually gonna deal with some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. And then we'll deal with the, um, the business what this business that I'm testifying about actually is all about, right? So they're gonna um, pull up that PowerPoint in a, just about a minute or so. I trust that you've been having a great, really great time. People like um, Sister Shirley, I know that I've gone before. I came on in time to see some beautiful pictures from my Sister Brenda Lee Strawn from the Bahamas, a place that I used to live in and love. Maybe she does go off a duff. I don't know if you do go off a duff, Sister Brenda Lee, but yeah, some good stuff. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh gosh, I wish you could ship some down to me. Down here in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, I really wish you can. Um, Sister Charlene, any word on the presentation? Um, you're not seeing your, my screen? Nobody's seeing my screen? No, the, what is up is the overview, which is after, I need the lessons learned presentation, please. Is that what, is that, what is everybody seeing? This is the lessons we learned see, presentation. No, this one is showing is the overview, which has the mission and focus and so on. Okay, go ahead and share from your side. Okay, then no problem. Let me make, I'll make you co-host one second. Co-host, right? Yeah, so that will be. Who was disabled participant screen sharing? I guess I have to hold on a little minute. Just one second, I'll make you co-host. Right, so I trust everybody's been having a great Saturday afternoon so far, all these precious persons taking time to come on and those who've been sharing with you. Really great to see so many entrepreneurs in the kingdom and especially female entrepreneurs or from fempreneurs as some call, call us. Right, I think I'm allowed to share. Right, so has everybody seen my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, we are. Hmm? Okay. Let's try this. Right. So it's all about lessons learned on my journey. It may not relate to all entrepreneurs' journey. But I think somewhere in the next few minutes, we'll have an idea of some of the do's and some of the don'ts if you're going to be an entrepreneur, right? If you're embarking. Number one, expect the good, the bad, and the ugly as you journey on in this road of being an entrepreneur. And what you need to purpose in your heart, what's my encouragement, is that as you go along, don't consider the word failure at all. You do not fail at all. But instead, I like this phrase from John Maxwell. He says, sometimes you win and sometimes you learn, right? So in going through this life as an entrepreneur, businesswoman, or whatever you would um, term it, adopt that mindset. Don't let anything that somebody else may define as a, fa a failure, uh, restrict you or hold you back. 
but A, develop the mindset that anything that happens in your business, even if it doesn't work out exactly how you purposed it to, you will learn at least one thing from having gone through the particular experience. So sometimes you win, sometimes you learn, develop that. You'll have ups and downs. Some days in my journey have been literally days like this, where you, you, you are surrounded by circumstances like these. This is from actually a hotel that I got to stay in as part of an assignment with that hotel. So you have the grand days where circumstances and what surrounds you are bright and good, luxurious, everything seems to be in your favor in this journey. But prepare, there are sometimes days like this one we're seeing here where there are bills to pay and you have no idea where the funds are coming from. You have rent to pay. Some persons as an entrepreneur, you may not have a lot of overheads in terms of, of rent, you know, paying rent for a building or so. But according to the business that you're doing, you may have these massive overheads, whether it's rent, whether it's mortgage. And so some days as an entrepreneur, get in mind, you're going to be dealing with more difficult and pressing issues. Anybody who presents you the idea that life as an entrepreneur is going to be just all good honky-dory sunshine is unfortunately lying to you. So you're going into this thing knowing before that days are not created equal, but you're going to have some high highs, some low lows, but at the end of the day, you should feel that purpose fulfillment in what you are doing in your life as an entrepreneur. Going through quickly. Another lesson. Let me see if I can move this up. Make sure that what you're doing is what God has sent you to do. I call it lesson three. So let your, your, your purpose be what God has outlined. Let God be the one that commissions you into your business because this is what will keep you when the different storms and the heavy winds blow and those winds come in different ways. It comes from criticisms of the, the business or service that you're doing that could, you know, make you start to really question what are these standards that you have set? Is that, does this even make sense? Right? And the criticisms may come from those far from you, maybe others in the industry that you're in, other consultants, other business people. But I'm also here to alert you that criticisms can come from those that are near and dear to you whether they are family members, immediate or extended, whether it's your loved one. There's some persons, they're very husbands who may benefit from the su success of the businesses are the ones who are still criticizing what they feed them or contribute to the household. So prepare for that. Prepare for the fact that yes, hardships can come or people will, will doubt. But when you know that you are doing exactly what God has sent you out to do in your business. It provides a, a bedrock of stability and security and assurance because you know at the end of the day, the one you have to please is Father God. And once he's pleased, man, everything else is just, you know, barely to be considered for want of a better phrase, right? Number four, and unfortunately, um, we have a little time and I'm trying to stick to it. So number four, remain true to your product. Um, if God gives you an idea for a particular thing, get to be passionate about your product. Um, be true to it. Understand the limitations. So for example, that flyer um, there is for something that God had me do from 2014 to 2017. It was a series of social events for Christ-focused single people to get together in different spaces and so on. What he gave me this for was not necessarily to have a, a, a thing where exact number of men, exact number of women would come and he would deliberately try to match up individuals. That was not what God showed me. 
but more bringing the body of Christ together to socialize, to get to know one another and so on. And then more casually, if persons connected on that way, well, all well and good for them. And it was not what seemed to be very successful um, in terms of that way, never had a marriage or serious relationship long-term to report out of it. But even recently, I went to, you know, a single thing last week or so, and I was saying to myself, no, that's not what Islam would have been in terms of this fix, um, matchy matchy hat, poor thing. That was not what God called us to. The flyer also had a lesson because I had a graphic artist do that flyer for me. I don't usually do flyers. And catering for the Christian audience, that dress may not seem to be a problem to many of us all. But for others, even within Christendom, because the girl had on a strapless and you're seeing it up now, this was the only summer flowery image she could have found on the line at the time, this was 2014. Uh, I got some serious criticism and so on from people who thought that this was a whole ungodly and un 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 worldly venture because of what the woman had on. So it's just a caution to persons. Remain true to your product, know what it is you have and so on, and be conscious of the needs or the limitations and, and perceptions of the people that you are trying to reach, right? So that was, is a line. But you, with your products, you would also um, learn what you can and cannot do your different limita limitations. This point number five, lesson five, is the, probably one of the most important. From the beginning of your business, set up the systems. Take the time to get your systems in place, especially in terms of accounting, bookkeeping, if these are not your strong points, and bookkeeping really is not mine, please con take counsel from people who are in the business, get yourself an accountant or what, because it can bite you in the end. Make sure your business is properly registered, which will help you in terms of banking and so on later. And the payment of taxes and other requirements, please expedite those. So this actually was why I thought of sharing on this topic. I had an experience where I paid taxes and there's like $900 remaining to pay. Let's say at the end of one year to the beginning or so of the following year. And I was like, I didn't have the $900 ever. I said, okay, and I'll, I'll leave that. It's only $900, right? Okay, cool, leave it and say, well, when I get the thing, I'll put it there. I did not. And a year later, when I went to get something to go to the bank or what, and I say I'm going to pay all the taxes, that $900 with the interest and so on was 5000 and something, nearly $6,000. And so since then, I've been telling business people, even if you had to take a loan from somebody or some institution to pay some of these things off, in a timely basis, please do so because you may regret it in the end. Lesson there, big time lesson, All right? Technology. If you are not tech savvy, employ some tech savvy friends because I've discovered that technology is your real help and key in that is developing a database. I have been the sort where I have to market stuff mainly by emails, right? And I would find myself writing, right? My pads and so on and writing all these different email addresses and people would register for programs and that, write and so on. And I am regretting even to know that along the way, I've lost out on a lot of valuable contacts because I did not automate, I didn't put, put these things into the computer and have a proper database set up. So all now, I'm still adding to my database. And people will tell you, international people, the database is like gold because that is how you keep reaching out to your people to buy your products, to tap into your services and so on very easily and very cheaply. So please, from early in your business, set up a database. You don't have to use access, right? You do not have to use um, Microsoft Access 
which some people have a problem with, you can use just your Excel and set up a little Excel database to start with, but it's going to be crucial in terms of your marketing. It can really help you. Lesson number seven, social media. Virtually any business these days would benefit from setting up a community on social media so that even if you're saying, well, I am not an uh, influencer or whatever, even if it's a physical business that you have, you can still develop a community, set up, for example, a Facebook page, set up the groups out of it, groups of people that like your products that are going to promote you. It's a cheap and easy way for you to like expand your reach and, and get good about your products and so on. All. And tied in that is using what we call user-generated content in terms of you not being the one going out there saying, I am all this and this, my programs are well delivered, persons are well engaged, but you get the people who are using your things, your device strategies for them to post, for them to put on social media that your product or your services are the best. So that in my um, practice, I actually, after doing training programs, so I'm a trainer, that's part of it. I ask persons if they are willing to record their feedback for me. And I use those feedback videos on my social media pages, right? So that's something that you can consider, something I definitely recommend. More free things, right? Eight. You will not last too long in the business if you allow pride to keep you back from being persistent. I am only still here in this business because I have learned how to follow up. So I may send you something now, I will check back. Some persons use reminders, different reminders that you can use, different programs to remind you when to check back on people with proposals and so on that you send up. Please persist. I have had um, one recent example. Last year, maybe the last two, three months of last year, I had contacted a particular institution, emailed this one, emailed that one, trying to get a meeting to discuss the products and services that I have to offer. Initially, I didn't get any responses, but I would check back or send an email. Hi, check it if you got it, whatever. Christmas came and went. Lo and behold, well into January, um, they said, well, actually, they looked at some of the things I said, and they say, well, we're interested in meeting you. And in the last couple of weeks, we have met, finally. They were totally well engaged. And a number, when I tell you, more than one um, actions, let's say, are set to come out of that because of follow-up, because of persistence. Once I feel that a particular institution or direction is where God wants me to, then I will persist until. And that is how I have um, gotten to be in this particular business. Also, money. It can't only be about money. The word of God says, give and it will come back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. You are blessed in different ways. Um, so give up your time, give up your money. If you do products, give up your products, all right? Let the Holy Spirit lead you to when to give, when to charge, etc. So for example, this um, flyer is for um, something I did January the 30th, 20th. 21 an event called new year new wings my time to soar it was definitely i knew it was what god wanted me to do at the time we prayed into this all the speakers were christian we gathered we prayed into this thing and it seemed like not successful not probably 30 something persons came so it's not about a profit it certainly was a big profit making venture but the lives that came were blessed and just about two weeks ago, one woman messaged me. Actually, she sent a 10 minute voice note a year later to thank me so much for doing that event because as a result of a particular session, 
she, the spirit of depression that had been on her from childhood, I mean, depression and suicide was broken off from her, right? As a result of her attending that. What price would I pay on that? How much money could I pay for that? So let it not be only about money, but allow the spirit of God to have you share with those things as well, right? Be a little flexible. Um, within the confines of what God would have you to do. I have a saying, blessed are the flexible for they shall not be broken. Why I say this, sometimes people may approach you to, to do things or sell things that may not be in your usual life. And you have to check in and see how much you believe I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Be so that a few years ago, two, three years, can't remember exactly, I was approached to do something called mystery shopping for an entire destination. A tourism authority in the Caribbean approached me for that. At first I was like, huh? Because I've only known of mystery shopping, you know, checking services and so on for individual businesses and so on. But Holy Spirit told me, don't tell them that. You cannot do that. And I have learned to listen to Holy Spirit because he even knows Excel when I'm stuck. He shows me what to do, right? So in this instance, he told me, talk to the people. And as I started speaking to them to determine their needs, God gave me the strategy. He showed me how to do the proposal. He showed me who to work with on this, how to execute it. And that contract is my biggest contract that I've executed to date because I was willing to consider what was not in my normal comfort zone because the spirit of the Lord said, yes, go ahead with it, right? So audacity, be bold, be strong, ask for what you want. Why, I, why do I say that? My training that you will discover a bit more about in the business presentation has been held in maybe four or five Caribbean countries and that's only because I was bold enough as God led to approach hotels where I knew no one, hotel associations where I knew no one to tell them, look, I have this program and so on. I would like you to partner with me in this way, whether it is you give me rooms, food and beverage or what uh, one or two persons could come attend free. This is the program. Do you want it? Whatever. I would like to partner with you. And so as a result, I've gotten these persons to partner with me, these companies and hotel associations to partner with me so that programs that I do have gotten to be hosted physically in the Caribbean. This was pre-COVID. So the spread was really due to um, God leading me to be bold enough to ask. My motto is, I will ask because the word of God says you have not because you ask not. So ask. They could very well say no. Most will say no. But then again, they may say yes. And we can go ahead. So be bold and ask. You never know what God will do through you being bold as he leads. All about what he leads you to do. Support people. Call another person in business. Encourage them. Send business your, their way if you can. I was really blessed um, about two weeks ago. I was calling a sister in Christ to see if she would send persons to my training program. And she started explaining the stresses and so on that she's been under with COVID and whatnot and really. And I felt led to pray for her, really pray. And as I started praying, Holy Spirit started really going on and she was just blessed nearly to tears after. But then within half an hour or so after, another sister contacted me who is also in business and she was able to speak into my life. So support others as you go along this journey. Bless others. That's a lesson. It, it, it kind of taps back into give and it will come back. And lesson number 13, at the end of the day, it's all about our spiritual life. Um, keep in the word, give priority to spending time with God regardless of what is happening because that will help strengthen you 
and help you stand. You can be resilient when you do so. Your business can last long as a result of the, the, the fruit of the spirit that helps to temper you, to help keep you from getting into the lows of depression, for example, when things like COVID come around that hits you out for maybe months or maybe years. The, the, your spiritual life, that relationship that you have with Holy Spirit is what is surely going to keep you at those times. So just privileged to share some of the lessons that I've learned in that time. Let me just quickly check the comments before I move on. Uh, questions and answers will be after the business presentation, but just checking your comments quickly. Okay, I guess I can leave it. Thank you, strong thing, right? Hmm. I guess we can look in detail. I saw a question there about um, romance, and so we can look at that after. So, just to the um, presentation on the business quickly. Momento, por favor. I'm going to share screen again. This time it's a slightly different presentation. Of course, this is dealing with the business. I trust everybody's seeing that presentation. Yes, we are. Okay. Right, so just a quick overview. Um, this is my business, Lisa Beckles Consulting, and we're going to look at it quickly. So what is this business I've been testifying about? It's a consultancy, strongly, unapologetically Caribbean hospitality consultancy, which I started in 2011. And it's properly registered, then less is properly registered in May 2015 in Trinidad and Tobago. And the aim of it is to develop our Caribbean societies and businesses, both the businesses and individuals by helping in different ways to bring both sets to our full potential. So it's all about development, right? So how does this consultancy do that? It's not modest, but it's through a range of consistently, that's one of my keywords, consistently well de delivered, customizable, so it's not cookie cutter, but customizable training programs, some business coaching, for example, through the Hospitality Assured program, as well as some of the events, we do senior events, such as that New Year New Wings, My Time to Soar, or Refresh and Refocus You events, which usually I would do for um, Administrative Professionals Day, which is upcoming. I say the chief consultant is Father God. If you look at my logo, you may not make it out. It looks like ants at the bottom, but there's a WWJFS, means working with Jesus, finding solutions. So that in this consultancy, I allow God to lead. He downloads, he guides me through. I talk to him throughout. I'm like, God, how to do this? Lord, show me how to do that. So he's the chief and I'm what I call it principal consultant and the programs and so on and the work that I do is a synthesis of approximately 32 years of very diverse experiences, diverse in terms of I've been in positions from line to supervisory to intern to junior managerial to executive management. So diverse as well as across locations, um, Jamaica, St. Lucia, the Bahamas, etc. Qualifications wise, I have a bachelor's in hotel management with first class honors from the UWI Center for Hotel and Tourism Management in Nassau. I also did um, Sir Arthur Lockjack School of Business's Train the Trainer program in 2012 as well. Some of the programs that my consultancy um, would conduct are the following the introduction to purchasing and cost control, which I may mention a bit more. That's the signature program that has been held nearly 40 times across the Caribbean. I also do supervisory management, various customer service and the service recovery programs. Team building events can also do, even virtually now. Life skills programs, I'm very passionate about that. So I just came out of a session in life skills with some youths in Nigeria 
There's life skills also for young leaders. I do mystery shopping now. And when I say bespoke, it means customized solutions according to what companies need. I can arrange to the programs that suit their training needs. And of course, we have the events such as Refresh and Refocus You. Now, the Signature Program has six modules. It covers the right supplier. So this is, a, this is the core purchasing module. Then there's controlling, which deals with what controlling really is in a management process, uh, situation. Then there's basic income statements, recipe costing, labor cost control, and cost reduction strategy. This is a six module 18 hour program that's usually done over three days. It will next be held on March 9th to the 11th. You can contact me if you're interested in that. Just to look at some of the feedback that people have given on programs quickly. This is on the introduction to purchasing and cost control. Um, this is one of them. It comes, the feedback comes from um, my Facebook page. So if you are on Facebook, I encourage you to please um, check out Lisa Beckles Consulting, right? So Lisa Beckles Consulting. Also, please take note of my um, email contact. It's l.t.beckles, B-E-C-K-L-E-S, at gmail.com, right? l.p.beckles at gmail.com. So let's see what this young lady has to say here. How are you doing? I'm very good. Great. So you have been and are now at the final day of the introduction to purchasing and cost control program. How has this program been for you? I must say, um, this has been a very enlightening program. I'm a believer that knowledge is power, and I greatly appreciated the knowledge that you shared with us. That course has definitely been an eye-opener. Small, detailed things that you take for granted, it shows you how important these things are. So yes, I have enjoyed this. Okay, what has been the most important thing that you learned so far? Most importantly, I would say, well, I think it brings me back to what I just said, the small things that we tend to forget. Uh, now, instead of walking around my department and seeing equipment and items, I'm kind of seeing dollars now and yeah, how valuable these things are. Okay, great. So would you recommend this program to anyone? Definitely. I would highly recommend this program to everyone. Even if you think that you've done cost control before, it's a great refresher, a great new thing to learn as well, that kind of thing. So I would definitely recommend it. Well, thank you so much. It's been great having you. Thank you. Bye bye. Right, so that's one person there. So we'll get off her. Um, just one moment and go back to the page. Just look at one more um, video before I hand over. I had a couple more, but in the interest of time. So this gives you an idea of what the Lisa Beckles Consulting um, page looks like. So you have all the past pictures, you have the videos. So I encourage you to go on, take a look at the um, site after, right? And let me have you take a look. So you'll see different sorts of videos on the purchasing and cost control. Um, program, but let's take a look at feedback on the life skills program. This is a short video. No. Hi, Kadeen. You Hi. have just finished the life skills um, program. How has it been for you? It has been a very Lisa, but we're not seeing the video. We're not seeing the video. I have You're not seen the video? No, and I was not. able to impart most of the We're only hearing because I'm my peers. Okay. Well, highly recommend it. I don't know what to say because it's showing here as if it's showing. I'm seeing it on the um the share screen. Is anybody else seeing was anybody else seeing the video? No, no you have to share, share screen. Yeah, because I'm seeing I'm seeing it. Mir Anyways, um, let's just say all the videos with the feedback, 
all the feedback um, videos are on that site. And so I will encourage you to take a look, right, at um, that particular site. I know you were here in feedback, you're saying, so the most important um, thing is that Lisa Beckles Consulting is available to assist you, whether you need um, training, whether you need uh, coaching solutions, um, you can check out the page for more information. I'm just typing um, the name into the, oh, somebody's just asking for my social media handle. So Lisa Beckles Consulting is the one on Facebook. I am not really active on Instagram. Uh, you can put Lisa Beckles on LinkedIn and I've just put in my email address as well. So Lisa Beckles on LinkedIn and telephone contact as well. Feel free to use it, 1-868-757-2324. So you can contact me um, at any point in time to follow up on that you would have seen here. So I want to thank each of you for your rapt attention this afternoon. May God really bless each of you. Thank you. Thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. And I really enjoyed the lessons learned as well as your, your business presentation. Um, do we have any questions? Feel free to ask anyone with any question for, for Lisa Beckles. You have a comment here, impressed with both of Sister Lisa's presentations. Um, feel free, everybody, take this opportunity to ask as many questions as you can. Okay, so you can we ask have anything. One, anything. <laughs> Okay, I have a question and it's on cost control. Mm -hmm. um, can you advise a small business on how they can um, keep their cost down? What are the measures they can put in place? Okay, so that is very broad, but what I will say to any business, which is a mistake that a lot of um, businesses are making, you're thinking of cost control in terms of just reduction. Cost control actually starts with the process of control in which deals with, first of all, the establishment of a standard. And a lot of the businesses that I encounter do not have properly established standards in the first place and may seem to cut down. So in terms of the approach to cost reduction strategy, it's about viewing each of the costs that you're incurring in your business as an investment, right? that you determine whether you should make that investment by that cost or not. So that it all then ties back to what is happening in the business. Where am I taking this business? Because it may mean in some businesses that whereas I'm going to drastically cut some of the costs, there are actually costs when I'm doing strategic cost reduction strategy that I may need to increase. Mm -hmm. I'm taking my business to. So in that final model, so that's why that particular program that I do is set up in the way that it is so that people understand, yeah, we have purchasing and so on. And purchasing is really focused on in module. But in the second module, we go into controlling and see some of what needs to go in there, even in terms of um, standards and standardization. I, I deal a lot with hotels and so on. So we deal with, you know, the importance of a standardized recipe that you're then going to cause so that you can predict each time that I serve this thing, this is how much this thing costs to produce. Um, this is how much I should sell it for to, to acquire certain percentages of profit. And so this is how much um, gross operating profit or let's say basic profit for this uh, platform that I will get each time I sell this item. 
I hope that was clear, Sister Charlene. It's very clear. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? I'm here for the questions as well. Or comments? I have a question, please, Sister Lisa. Thank you so very much for a very informative presentation. Um, do you mm -hmm. have a listing of the various types of um, services that you offer on your Facebook page, et cetera? I do not um, list them. I haven't listed them on the Facebook page, but maybe that's something that I should, what I'm really working on is um, having a website up within the next month or two. I usually focus on emails um, where I'm able to send persons a detailed business profile. So it's not just about the programs that I do, but I introduce myself, the company, the sort of clientele that we've had, and then go into um, the programs. Uh, for anybody who is on, maybe you're in business or you work with some company ministry or whatever, you can email me so that I could send you even the training calendar because I have a training calendar that's out for 2022 that indicates each month what programs are focused on and with all the contacts. So that's been the approach. All right. Thank you so much, Sister Sabrina. I see HR Wisdom Limited hands up. Um, Hello, how are you? Um, I am great. Good. Thanks for your presentation. Very real, very genuine. You know, I'm enjoying it. I have a question for you though. Um, what mm -hmm. form does your free stuff normally take? The things my you give free away? Yes. What form does it normally okay. take? My my free stuff usually is in the form of um, seminars because what I do is a, a consultancy and training. It's usually in the form of um free training programs, especially in the area of youth, right? Particularly for purity. I'm passionate about youth being able to um, maintain uh, pure and holy lifestyles. So I'm really, I tend to veer towards those sorts of programs on a case by case basis. As I feel led to, yeah, I'll say, you know, do it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? HR, remember to take your hands down, please, if you're finished. Okay. It looks like nobody else wants to hear anything else from me. So I will um, probably get off at this point. Point. Final call, anyone else? Okay. Thank you so much, Sister Lisa. Okay. We have a couple Got of questions it. in the chat. One of them is mm -hmm. on a book. Mm -hmm. One second, I'm trying to look at the question. Yeah, that was early. I think I blinked that. Okay. The question is, <laughs> what advice would you give to persons from the Caribbean who are writing Christian fiction romance novels? How would mm -hmm. you encourage them to launch out? So I will allow you to answer. And also we have Reverend Ruth on the call, ah. who's also an author. So okay. the two of you guys. <laughs> so since, since I'm not an since I'm not an author, I would really defer to um, Reverend Ruth. What I would say, though, is that I've been with a couple of friends who have written books, and um, there are some sites. There's Zulon, X-U-L-O-N, Zulon Press, that you can Google. And most of these sites actually help the authors um, in terms of getting the book actually published. Depending on the nation that you're actually from, there may also be publishers. I know in Trinidad and Tobago, we have one or two persons that can get the book published um, for you, right? Um, one of the ways that people would usually promote books as well is to send, you know, samples to key persons, influencers, and so on, and get them to read book and start promoting it. 
um, in working with another friend as well, we set up a Facebook page for the book. So we usually think of um, Facebook pages like for businesses or just our normal page, but you can do that for the book as well and use a combination of um, different posts, contests, boosted posts, et cetera, to help promote um, your book. All right, I hope that helps and I wish you all the very best because you know God wants to, us to tap into that creativity. So I hand over to Reverend Booth. Hi, good evening, afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Charlene and your team for this excellent symposium that you've hosted, GTA Economy. Um, in response to the question concerning the launching of a book, I would want to encourage you to press forward in what the Lord has given to you. The fact that you're writing a Christian romance novel means that you have received this idea, inspiration from the Holy Spirit, and he will help you as you continue to write. One of the things I want to encourage you is do not doubt yourself. You know, never doubt that you can write. Just keep writing. And secondly, quality. Whatever you do, whatever you produce, it must be quality. We represent the king and whatever we produce, it must be quality. You need to identify an editor. Never edit yourself. Do not say you're going to edit the book yourself or give it a couple of friends to edit. Find a professional editor. It will cost but it is worth it. It is worth it. You also need to get a publisher. And also, I want to encourage you to ensure that you continue the process to completion. If you have any more questions, if you need any contacts with editors and publishers, you can contact me. My email address is theanatomyofgod at gmail.com. Thank you. And bless you as you write. Thank you so much, Reverend Ruth and Sister Lisa for answering the question. We have a comment here. A person, the person messaged me directly. Shilin Dario. hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Shilin, one second. Are you Shilin. trying to say Shilin Darimpa? Yes. Would you like to speak on your business? Yes, please. Very briefly, like go ahead. Okay. My name is Shirlene Darrenville. I am from Trinidad and Tobago. And my business is unique in nature, being that it is based on my gifting, being a poet psalmist. As mentioned earlier on, I have canvas tote bags available on the market. And these, these bags, they feature my original poems. I, I am a published author. My book was published in, in the United States by a company called Zulon Press. And if it's okay, I would like to read one of my poems that is on the bag. Can I go ahead and do that? Sure, go ahead. Um, yes, ma'am. This poem is entitled Beautiful Black Woman. And it goes like this. She stands astute, not ashamed of her roots poised for success with no indecisiveness. She holds her head high and radiates with a warm smile that is captured from miles. She is the depiction of strength. She is blessed. Her skin tone is a shade of the fruitful earth and none can quantify her weight. She is free and cannot be bound by inadequacy. She needs none to define her, for her uniqueness empowers her. She stands out from the crowd and is as the sweetest sound. 
She is virtuous and is the one in whom your heart can safely trust. She is me, the passes through time and only thine. So that is one of the poems on the bars. The bars were oh, imported from America. They are canvas printed to a bag. The price of one bag is $200. And um, I also have canvas prints on sale. I have wall hangings and so forth. And in time, I'm looking to diversify the business to do embroidered towels, where I empower women and that kind of stuff. In time, I'll be in time. I'll be doing the printing of baby clothes as the business grows and motivational mirrors. I will post a link of my website in the chat so that whoever is interested can view the items there. So that's all right now. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay, so we're almost to the end of our our program. We have next on the list, Sister Sharon Hermit. And before I put on her presentation, I would like to ask you to place your email address in the chat. If you have any questions, please place them in the chat. If we have any future, when we have any future event, we'll also email you to inform you. So be free to place your email address in the chat. Thank you so much. So I'm going to welcome Sister Sharon Hermit. So I'm going to share her presentation. Good evening, everyone. Thanks, Charlie, and the GTA team for the opportunity to share on this platform. I've been blessed so far. I've enjoyed all the presentations, and I have been enriched. So you can Very go ahead. Welcome. So let me introduce you. Sharon Elaine Hermit. Ms. Sharon Hermit, Elaine Hermit is a committed Christian and consummate HR professional who has practiced HR management for over three decades. She holds a bachelor's of arts degree in theology and ministry and a Master of Science in Human Resource Management. She's a Justice of the Peace for the island of Jamaica. Ms. Hummett is a Managing Director of HR Wisdom Limited and Sexual Shalom Global Outreach, the author of Brushstrokes on his masterpiece. From the humiliation of rape to exaltation in Christ. She writes a blog called a hermit, sorry, a hermit's musgings. A, a hermit's musings. <laughs> a hermit's musings. And mm -hmm. writes for the Freedom Comrade, a Jamaican newspaper. She's the mother of two other children and a grandmother of two. So everybody welcome Sharon E. Hermit. So she has prepared a video. So would you like me to go ahead and play the video? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay. Good evening. I hope you have been benefiting from the presentation so far. I certainly have, and I am now looking forward to sharing with you on the very important topic, the emotionally wounded at work, dealing with emotional pain from trauma in the workplace. Let's define some words and concepts. Emotions are a complex experience of consciousness, bodily sensation, and behavior that reflects the personal significance of a thing, an event, or a state of affairs. Emotional wound is more aptly described than defined. Depression, anxiety, angry outbursts, isolation, change in interests, lacking enjoyment in life, 
and a change in personality are common signs of emotional wound. There are two types of trauma. Big T trauma, which is a reaction to a deeply disturbing, life-threatening event or situation. Examples, war, natural disasters, violent crimes, a school shooting, car accident, the death of a parent, etc. Little T trauma are categorized as highly distressing events which include non-life-threatening injuries, emotional abuse, death of a pet, bullying or harassment, and loss of significant relationships. While one small T trauma may not lead to significant distress, multiple compounded small T traumas, particularly in a short span of time, are more likely to lead to an increase in distress and trouble with emotional functioning. Emotional intelligence, the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions, and to handle interpersonal relationships sensibly and empathetically. Unfortunately, trauma abounds in society and in the workplace, which is a microcosm of the society. Realize that emotionally wounded people come to the every day. How do you deal with an employee who, one, just got a divorce, two, grew up without a father, three, was sexually abused, four, lives in a violence-prone community. Some of these employees do not even know or are aware that they are wounded. Some of them may be aware, but don't know that the wound has an effect on their life at work. Still others may have an idea, but choose to ignore it or bear it in silence, telling themselves that it will soon pass and that they just need to talk it out. Some are afraid of letting others know they have a trauma because they are afraid of being labeled or even ostracized. What are some of the characteristics of the emotionally wounded? The emotionally traumatized tend to cry over what others perceive as little things. This is so because they are constantly in pain on the subconscious level. When this appears in the workplace, others may withdraw from the person and label them as soft or touchy or too sensitive and emotional. They might even tell the wounded to get over whatever is going on with them and blame them for being spoiled at sports. Emotional wounds prevent the wounded from focusing on things familiar. They are usually demotivated and negative emotions like anger, shame and guilt play a significant role in their behavior. At work, they can't focus on the task at hand as they are constantly bombarded with memories or thoughts of the painful situation or situations. The emotionally wounded are vulnerable to the behaviors of other people. They are usually very sensitive to other people's words, tone of voice, questions, and jokes. Their wounds will cause them to avoid interacting with people, which may eventually lead them to becoming social outcasts. That spells trouble for teamwork or team building in the organization. The heartache will make the emotionally wounded look down on themselves and feel worthless. Self-blame is common as they feel responsible for the hurt they are experiencing. They also feel hopeless and unable to heal. These feelings may get expression in the way the wounded dresses for work, wearing dowdy colors and having an unkempt appearance. Constantly replaying unpleasant events 
causes emotional wounds to fester. That is, they become worse or more intense. Some days, the sufferer might not even be able to function at work as the pain is so bad. Hurt in one area of your being spills over into the others. The emotional wound may cause the sufferer to have physical manifestations in headaches, backaches, gut discomfort, etc. If the emotional wounds are not addressed, the wounded will eventually become disengaged, unproductive or underproductive. Other problems include absenteeism, which is the practice of regularly staying away from work without good reason, and presenteeism, the practice of being present at one's place of work for more hours than required, especially as a manifestation of insecurity about one's job. Why is this a problem, you might ask? It is a problem because the employee may be present but not doing any work. The troubled employee may also make costly mistakes. The emotionally wounded can become a threat to others in the organization. How many shootings, woundings, or killings in the workplace have you heard about? I can guarantee you have heard of at least one. As can be seen, this is not a light issue and can result in losses for the organization which are not recoverable. These all have a deleterious effect on the organization's bottom line, that is, its profit-making capabilities. Why should this matter? Let's imagine that one of your best employees get involved in a major accident and is badly injured. Miraculously, they were able to return to work within a short time and you breathe a sigh of relief. You make preparations for the employee's return to work. You may reduce work hours or enter into another flexible arrangement. Rearrange the work area to accommodate the employee more comfortably. Ensure that the employee has ease of access to the building and facilities. Example, you may put in a ramp for an employee in a wheelchair. You may allocate another space for the employee, etc. Time off for doctor's visits. And you regularly check in with the employee to see if he or she is okay. You do your best in every way to ensure that the employee does not even consider leaving the job. There are many valuable employees who become emotionally wounded from time to time or even over extended periods. Why is this not the case for them? What can the employer do? I hope you are getting a picture of how serious a challenge this is. It has been ignored for far too long to the detriment of many employees, some of whom ended up losing their jobs and for the organization. What can you do? Cultivate emotional awareness in the workplace. Emotional awareness is the ability to recognize and make sense of not only your own emotions, but also those of other people. Inculcate or instill emotional intelligence by constant instruction until it becomes part of your organization's culture. Create emotionally intelligent policies, procedures, and programs. By this I mean that your policies, procedures, and programs should be based in an awareness of how they will affect the employee emotionally and mitigate any strategies put in place. Assess your own emotional state on a continuous basis. Hurting people 
hurt other people. Even if the hurt is unintentional, it is still damaging. Create an action plan and procedure of how to deal with the emotionally wounded as part of your risk management strategy. Lobby for your health insurance providers to include coverage for psychotherapy, psychiatry, counseling, and other mental health programs in your health insurance policy. Demarginalize mental health. Bring it front and center. It is important to the well-being of your people and your organization. Facilitate compassionate leave for emotional or mental health issues. Foster good mental health practices. Deliberately build fun activities into your work programs. Ensure there is a grievance procedure, disciplinary procedure, and complaints procedure, and that they are widely known. Manage by walking around. Let your employees know you care about them. Build trust. That is big. Your employee will not open up to you if you are perceived as untrustworthy. Emphasize respect, honor, active listening, empathy, servant leadership, and humility, among other virtues, as values in the workplace. Get professional help when needed. Don't try to be your employee's counselor. You are not trained for this and may do more harm than good. I thank you. Thank you very much. Um, does anybody have any questions on the presentation? Great presentation telling you about emotional intelligence, how to treat others around you. Anybody with any questions? I do not have a question, but I just want to commend um, Ms. Hermit for that um, presentation because we don't often pay attention to how your emotional wounded woundedness can affect you in the workplace at all. And it was really thorough even in terms of how the employer can help in those situations. So thank you. Welcome. Mm -hmm. So right now, if there are no more questions, I will go to the other presentation, her, her business, her actual business. I see a question, a comment, a question in the chat. Do you have any tools that you could suggest to measure emotional IQ? Well, you could use the Bible, which is very rich in emotional language. You read a psalm. The psalms and David's psalms help you to identify what you're feeling at particular times in life. That's the first thing that comes to mind right now, but I have to research others. Thank you. So I'm going to share her presentation on her business. Presenting HR Wisdom Limited at the heart of your business. HR Wisdom Limited was incorporated on September 25, 2020. The management includes Sharon E. Hermit, founder, managing director, and Shari K. Hart, company secretary. We are located in Kingston, Jamaica. The telephone contact 876-777-0136. Email contact hrwisdom2020 at gmail.com. Facebook, hashtag hrwisdom. HR Wisdom is a full-service human resource consultancy 
which provides consultation and HR administration services to all types of businesses. Our products are the answer to organizations that do not have an HR unit or department, want to outsource the HR function, or want assistance with the HR function. The vision, agency of transformation with impact and reach locally, regionally, and globally. Mission, a catalyst for transformational human resource management through fostering and delivering value-added HR products and services. Products and services. We provide products and services for the three generic organizational strategies, which mirror the stages in the life of an organization. There is the growth stage, where manpower planning, staffing, compensation management, and performance management feature. There is a stability stage, where you deal with retention, succession management, employee relations, and compliance. Then there is retrenchment, where mergers and acquisitions are handled, retooling, and industrial relations, among other programs. Our products and services are contextualized to the personality and culture of the organization. It is not a one-size-fits-all. HR Wisdom's competitive advantage is a value-added component to our products and services. One such value added is emotional intelligence. Example, dealing with the emotionally wounded in the workplace. Another is helping organizations do business God's way. The company, in association with Jamaica's National Intercessory Prayer Network, convenes a quarterly virtual prayer and teaching meeting dubbed Business Incense. Proverbs 4, 7-9 Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Presenting Sexual Shalom Global Outreach, which is an affiliate business to HR Wisdom Limited and was incorporated in September 2021. SSGO has the vision of fostering Christ-centered sexual wholeness for victims of sexual abuse and trauma. The mission, facilitating biblical sexual flourishing or shalom for individuals with sexual woundedness through education, collaboration, counseling, and one-on-one -on -one ministry. The objectives, exposing and cleansing sexualized wounds, dispelling sexual ignorance, promoting God's perspective on sexuality and sex, uncovering lies and myths about human sexuality and sex, exploring generational sexual immorality, providing spiritual intelligence about sex and sexuality, starting the journey on the road to healing and transformation. On September 25, 2021, the outreach held its first conference dubbed Sexual Shalom Conference and Book Launch, where my book entitled Brush Strokes on His Masterpiece, From the Humiliation of Rape to Exaltation in Christ, was launched. The third business. The book was self-published under the HR Wisdom Limited imprint and is available on Amazon in ebook and paperback. In Trinidad and Tobago, paperback from Christian Solidarity Movement and from 
the author. Set Social Norm Global Outreach is located in Kingston, Jamaica. The telephone contact is 876-875-7065. The email is info for sexualshalom at gmail.com. Coming up, the second Sex Social Norm Conference will be held on September 25 this year under the theme, Your Year of Release, and will feature regional and international speakers. So, say the date, September 25, 2022. Thank you. So, we're at the, the end of our presentations. I would like to extend um, the opportunity to persons if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions on how we can improve or any um, training sessions you may be interested in, please feel free to unmute your mic and let us know. Any questions for HR Wisdom? Don't forget to put your email address in the chat so we can contact you when we have any future events. Remember, we've done Excel training sessions before, we've done PowerPoint, we've done accounting, we've done some presentations on debt management. So feel free to put your email address so we can contact you when we have any training sessions or any events. So do we have any comments before we close, before we go to the, the, the vote of thanks? Did you enjoy the session or was it, was it good um, for you? Any takeaways? Go ahead, Sister Fedora. I just wanted to say again, a um, wonderful session to everyone who presented. Um, you did a good job. The last presenter, I really appreciate your presentation on emotional healing and, and wellness. I really, really did appreciate this one. All of them as a matter of fact, this one really hit home for me because I need this more than ever before now. And I must say, Sister Charlene, good job, keep it up for the glory of God. The wood hat is right on your head. Hope and trust in God, my sister, as you continue the journey. And for all of us who are believers, I want to encourage all of us, whether we are CEOs, can employ others, we are not the boss. Jesus is the boss because our savior sees, because our savior saves, because our savior supplies and because our savior supports. All of us, let's continue to put God first and not forget in ministry, in spite of how busy we can be, all the best to everyone, God bless them. Good job. Thank you very much, Sister Fedora. Okay, so is someone saying something? Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much, Sister Mona. So right now we're, we're at the end and I'll call Sister Gerlin to give the vote of thanks. Sister Gerlin, are you with us? Good evening, everyone.
Good evening. Yes, ma'am. So today we, the GTA economy arm of Whaling Women Caribbean, are so grateful for this opportunity to gather together over this global platform. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to the countries represented, the businesses that were showcased, the facilitators, and all the individuals who would have helped made this event possible. To all of our dynamic speakers, Dr. Anne Mumbu, Mumbi Omundi from Kenya, Mr. Alexis William from St. Lucia, Ms. Shirley Mitchell Burmett, and Ms. Lisa Beckles, both from Trinidad and Tobago, Ms. Brenda Lee Strawn from Salvador, Bahamas, and last but not least, Ms. Sharon Hermit from Jamaica. And I think we would have also had Ms. Sherlene Daryl, Daryl, I think, from who showcased or shared her poetry. All right. And so we thank all of those individuals for their contribution today. And a special proverb says, give a man a fish and he will return, but teach a man the fish and he will have it for life. All right, and he will never go hungry, I believe it was, <laughs> sorry. But we also wanna express much thanks to our GTA economy leader, Sister Charlene Regis, and also our national coordinator, our Caribbean coordinator, Reverend Ruth Lawrence, once again, we thank everyone for the, your contribution, your time, and your effort today. We know that this, this symposium would not have been successful without your support. So once again, thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone, for your participation. Thank you um, to our... Caribbean coordinator, Reverend, um, sorry, Ivo, Sister Yvonne. And thank you to our overall willing women lead, our sister, Dr. Shafe. Thank you so much to everyone who participated. I enjoyed the session and I hope you enjoyed it as well. So shalom, peace be with you. God bless. Bye everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.